and Lafayette are now tied 7-7 that game in the first quarter of play. Bino, we have a lot to talk about today where showdown Saturday is concerned, but you'd like to uh, tell the College Football Hall of Fame something. You have a few ballots to fill. Yeah, I got a ballot this week to vote for the Hall of Fame, and I voted for Frank Howard, the former coach of Clemson. I can't believe he's in, not already in the Hall mm -hmm. of Fame. What he did for Clemson is what Rockney did for Notre Dame. It's a disgrace. Get him in the Hall of Fame. All right, you heard it. Now let's get him in. Let's move on and tell you about Showdown Saturday here on ESPN. It begins with the game, Yale and Harvard immediately following. Then the tip-off classic. Could it be Dickie V on Showdown Saturday? College scoreboard, 5.30 Eastern time after John Saunders and Dick Vitale are done. Then it's Syracuse and West Virginia that follows at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And the Canes against the Tigers, 9 p.m. Eastern time. What a double hitter we have for you, followed by Sports Center at midnight Eastern Time, as we'll bring you up to date on everything going on in college football. The National Football League continues its uh, games here on ESPN tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, as Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann call the game that has a lot of importance to New England as they take on the Dolphins at Joe Robbie Stadium. And, of course, Chris Berman will get it all started with NFL Game Day along about this time tomorrow. That will do it for Bino Cook. I am Tim Brando. Let's start Showdown Saturday. Sean McDonough in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Tim, it's a beautiful crisp fall day here on the outskirts of Boston, Massachusetts. Perfect weather for the 105th renewal of the most storied rivalry in all of college sports as Harvard and Yale prepare to meet in the season finale of Ivy League football. Harvard and Yale alumni have come from all over the world for this day, which is as much a social event as it is a football game. It has been an otherwise disappointing season for both Harvard and Yale, but a win today in the game would erase all of the bitter memories of 1988. Since 1870, Harvard and Yale have been meeting in football. And today here at Harvard Stadium, it's the 105th renewal of the game. The game is just moments away, but here outside Harvard Stadium, the tailgating has been going on for hours. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Jack Corrigan. Nice to have you with us today for the game, Harvard and Yale. And the football game will take center stage in just a few moments, but this has been center stage for hours now. These people have been coming here for years, and. This tailgating, Jack, is really every bit as much of the game as the football game itself. Well, when you talk about this weekend in college football, you know, it's the traditional weekend for the great rivalries. And in this game, Harvard and Yale, they call it the game. Indeed it is because all the surrounding hoopla, there are games all day yesterday, and the tailgaters this morning. It doesn't make any difference what the records are for these two teams this afternoon. This is what it's all about, and that's why we've got the great turnout here, and we'll have a good game this afternoon. It doesn't matter what the records are or what the weather is. We remember just last year at New Haven, 18 degrees at game time, the wind chill 30 below zero, but all of these people were there. 68,000 people were in the stands, and we'll have a sellout here again today. I think also emblematic of what the game is, is a story we'll be following during the football game today. The story of Tom Yowie, the Harvard quarterback. Tom Yowie has a uh, fractured bone in his leg. He has missed the last couple of games. Uh, basically, it's a non-stress bone, so a uh, non-stress carrying bone, if you will. So as much pain as he can handle, he's going to play. And when you're playing in your final college game against Yale, you're going to play. And the other side for Yale, they've got uh, Darren Keeler, who was playing baseball on the fall baseball team at the start of the year. Now he's playing quarterback in the biggest game, certainly, of the season for him and maybe in his football career. Well, this isn't the only football game being played around the country today, but I'd be willing to bet it might be the only place you'll see a candelabra at the tailgate party. The party is just about over. The football game is set to begin, and we'll be back at Harvard Stadium after this. ESPN's presentation of college football is being brought to you by AT&T, the right choice. By Pitney Bowes, see how your mailroom, copier, facsimile, and dictation systems can profit from the Pitney Bowes relationship. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. 
The sellout crowd of more than 40,000 continues to file into Harvard Stadium. We'll have the opening kickoff right after this. People have a tendency to equate 800 service to, to big businesses and, and massive telephone systems, and, and that is not true at all. With our 800 ready line service, you don't need any special equipment. Uh, it uses the basic telephone service that you have right now. Uh, when that telephone rings and you picked it up, that could well be an 800 call and new business for you. Virtually every business can afford 800 service. It's certainly not for the, only the largest customer. We're not a company. But we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army. The Navy. The Air Force. The Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Mr. Pitney, Mr. Bose, Mr. Product, Mr. Service, Mr. Button Down, Mr. Button Up. One builds office systems, one builds customer relationships. The idea person, the people person. Every Pitney needs a Bose. Most companies need them both. See how your mailroom, copier, facsimile, and dictation systems can profit from the relationship. I have an incredible idea. Do our customers need it? Beauty has its price. The cars on the left and right cost over $50,000. The car in the middle costs under $15,000. This is Chrysler LeBaron Turbo. And at that price, it may well be the most beautiful car in the world. LeBaron. Beauty with a passion for driving. It's the 105th renewal of the game. Yale leads the all-time series. Harvard won last year's contest between the two schools and won the Ivy League championship in the process. And if you're a Yale fan, you have to be heartened by that information. George Bush is the president-elect. Usually that means good things for Yale in this rivalry. Alan Hall set to kick off. He's a senior economics major from Tallahassee, Florida playing in his final game for Harvard. And we're underway. Low line drive kick. Fielded by Buddy Zachary. He has trouble with it and covers the ball at the 18-yard line. That's where Yale begins, first and 10, led by sophomore quarterback Darren Keeler. Keeler began the season as a student at Yale, not as a member of the football team. He joined the program two games into the season. Zachary and Callahan, the running back. Zachary is Yale's leading rusher. Chris Plunkett is the tight end. Center is Mike Ciotti. The guards, Jeff Rudolph, all Ivy last year, and Joe DeSilva. Ron Lewis and Art Coleman at 310 are the tackles. Tom Zuba and Mike Hosang, the wide receivers. Yale does not throw much. Buddy Zachary trying to get outside. He is wrapped up and thrown down by Don Peterson. The Harvard captain, number 99, and he leads the Harvard defense. Looking at the Harvard Crimson defensively, Tom McConnelly has been hurt most of the year. He's the nose man and a very good one. The tackles, Jim Bell and Mike Murphy. As Sean mentioned, the captain, Don Peterson, is their leader on defense, along with Peter Allen. The linebackers, the leading tacklers on the team, Greg Hubert and Rick McIntyre. The secondary, fairly young, Molinari and Frayne. The safety men on the corners, Olsen and Jimmy Smith. Loss of one on first down. The option run by Keeler. He's tripped up by Jim Smith at the 24-yard line after a gain of seven. Yale, predominantly a run team. They've thrown only two touchdown passes this year, while Eli quarterbacks have thrown 16 interceptions. Yale's offense under Darren Keeler really struggling the past couple of weeks. They've scored only seven points in their last two games. And I think what we're going to see this afternoon is they are hoping Keeler can get things going because he is a shifty runner, but you're right, he cannot throw the ball well. We'll probably see Mark Brubaker play at times at quarterback. He's the better thrower. Yale facing third down and a long three. Zachary appears to have the first down. He was dropped by Rick McIntyre at the 29-yard line, but it's good for Yale first down. We get into this ball game this afternoon, and you've got two teams who had bad seasons. 
in light of that, Sean, you could probably expect these guys to try and do a few different things this afternoon. I mean, it, you've got nothing to lose. The championship is not on the line, so if you want to try some razzle dazzle, what the heck, you can play to the alumni, if you will. First and 10, Yale. Kevin Bryce, number 26. He picked up five on first down. Out to the 34-yard line, Greg Hubert made the tackle. Bryce was the starter at the end, at the beginning of the season, rather. But with the emergence of Buddy Zachary, Bryce has become a backup. He was in there with three backs in the backfield on first down for Yale. On second and five, it's Buddy Zachary. He stopped short of a first down at the 37-yard line. Zachary, a senior political science major from Manchester, Connecticut. Carmcos has been around for a lot of these games, to say the least. His 24th season now as a head coach, and you may have seen in our game day profile of this game that my partner did so nicely that uh, Mr. Coase has seen an awful lot of things throughout the series of this one. And Carm's one of the great people in college football. Say the same for Joe Restick on the Harvard mm -hmm. side, too. Tough to find two coaches more respected in the game of college football. Zachary didn't get to first down yardage, it would appear. Rick McIntyre made the big play defensively for Harvard. He's a junior from Sarasota, Florida, studying history as his major. Rick McIntyre. Looks like they're short. Yale has asked for a measurement, but from here it appears they're a good half a yard short. And already you can hear down on the field <laughs> people saying, go for it. When you're two, six, and one, why not go for it? Well, we might have spoken prematurely. It is a first down. Well, we are not exactly in the middle of the press box, to say the <laughs> least, up here. So we don't have the best angle on these. So I'll give I'm you a break on that one, fella. I'm not sure we're in greater Boston from where we are. Here we are in our little tent, high above Harvard Stadium, somewhere down there. <laughs> and we're at about the 20-yard line uh, as you look at it. Excuses, excuses. On first and 10, Zachary, a big hole. He's into the secondary, and he's tackled by Henry Olson at the 47-yard line. Watch Buddy Zachary. He along with Brian Keyes of Pennsylvania, the two quickest tailbacks in the Ivy League. He does such a good job of accelerating once he gets to the hole. Spotted the opening there, and he just accelerated by Peter Allen, the defensive end, forcing the secondary, Henry Olsen, to come up and make the stop. But Zachary has been very effective for Yale, and if he can carry the football, Yale can control the clock, and that's what they want to do today. He had four straight 100-yard-plus games, as a matter of fact, but he's been held to 99 yards combined over the last two games. It's a first down for Yale as the ball was pushed out to midfield. Harvard knows Yale is going to run. They haven't attempted a pass yet, but Yale's done an effective job so far moving the ball on the ground. Well, Yale last week against Princeton, opening drive went right down and scored, and were leading in that ball game 7 to nothing. the Bulldogs, and had another touchdown called back, and it seemed that when they had that touchdown called back, they lost their momentum. This is a team, because they have struggled offensively, needs to get off the mark quickly and effectively. They have done that. And to expand upon that point, as we've got a momentary stop and play called for by the officials, Harvard has not stopped anybody this year. You can see Joe Restick, the Harvard coach, yelling out to his defense. They are giving up all, kind of, all kinds of points, almost 30 points a ball game. If Yale goes right down and scores as much as this is the game, those kids are also saying in the back of them, here we go again, we, we're having problems. That's why Yale wants to move it right down and score if they can. We've played four minutes and 10 seconds. And we're still not sure about the reason for the delay. It looks now as though they have a problem with the chains along the far side of the field. Maybe that's why they picked up that first down. It didn't look like they had. The chain was only about nine and a half yards long. No score. Back to Cambridge after this. We're not a company. 
but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence, become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Every time. A GM owner a little unhappy. He was surprised that bumper to bumper plus owner care meant plus $100 deductible after the first year every time he brings his car in for repairs. Chrysler's Crystal Key gives you the best owner care of any luxury sedan for five years or 50,000 miles with no deductible. Chrysler's New Yorker. It gives you everything except $100 deductibles. All right, stand by, replay on slim O A. Roll A and dissolve A. Good. Roll C. Wipe C. Let's get whiting out on camera eight over there. Nod so I know you're there, somebody. Ready, D. Get back to the coach on that. Okay, let's go to camera five, please. Whiten out. Ready, camera eight, take eight. <laughs> I didn't know your family was in town. Go to camera two. Nice work, people. Very nice work. For the teamwork, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. So what are you gonna do tonight? Probably watch TV. Today's game is being brought to you by Chrysler. Chrysler believes a luxury car should be a great driving car. At Chrysler, we're driving to be the best. By Budweiser, Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber. Promotional consideration provided by Chrysler Plymouth. John McDonough and Jack Corrigan back at Harvard Stadium in Cambridge, Massachusetts. No score, 10.50 to play first quarter. Yale with first and 10 at midfield. Keeler keeps it and picks up seven down to the Harvard 43. You got to admire the moxie of that little guy, Darren Keeler. He knows that the defense does not expect him to throw the football when he goes out to the flanks and doesn't have any hesitation about tucking it under and turning up field. Harvard's going to have to do something different on defense here. Start to stun a little bit. Toss to Kevin Bryce, the senior from Chicago. He has a first down at the 38-yard line. Greg Hubert made the tackle with help from Peter Allen for Harvard. I get back to what I said before, Sean. Both these teams Harvard at two and seven, Yale at two, six and one. You got to try some different things, and the same holds true here for the Harvard defense. They're playing it very straight right now, and that big offensive line of Yale's is dominating the line of scrimmage. They're moving it right down the field. They've got to try something different. On first down, Kevin Callahan, the sophomore fullback, picks up eight. He went down to the 30-yard line. Again, it was Rick McIntyre who made the tackle for Harvard. Well, that time they did try something there. They blitzed Bobby Frame. Unfortunately, they ran inside of the stunning strong safety and picked up good yardage. Picked up eight, second down and two. I'm coming for Yale. 9.27 to play, and the clock is running in the first quarter. No score. Harvard has not had the football yet. Yale has picked up four first downs on this drive. Bryce again, Zachary with a good lead block. And Bryce is close to a first down at the 27. He has a first down, and that's five first downs now on this drive for Yale. What a crunch between sophomore fullback Kevin Callahan, the youngster out of Elgin, Illinois, and Greg Hubert, the senior inside linebacker from Worthington, Ohio, for Harvard. Callahan made the block, but he paid for it. 12 plays on this drive, all of them running plays. And they'll stay on the ground, why not? Zachary, inside the 25 and down near the 23-yard line. Buddy Zachary began his career at Yale as a defensive back, and he was honorable mention All-Ivy as a sophomore, but that was really because at that time, Yale had a lot of talented running backs. They knew Zachary could be converted someday to a running back, and he's been Yale's leading rusher as a senior. Didn't play much last year because he's had a back problem. That hasn't bothered him really at all this season. 
back in that wishbone set. On second and six, Zachary trying to go down the sideline. He's knocked out of bounds by Bobby Frame at the 11. 12-yard game, first down Yale, and the Bulldog drive continues. We talk about the wrinkles. Well, here's a wrinkle by the Yale Bulldogs. They come in with the wishbone. They've got good running backs in Bryce and Zachary. This time, it's Bryce making an excellent block to hook the defensive end. It enabled Zachary to get around the corner and pick up good, good yardage again. Hey, what you line up on those two tight ends and a wishbone, that's unusual for the Ivy League. This drive almost seven minutes long, 8-10 to play in a scoreless first quarter. Yale on the move at the 10-yard line, flag down. Zachary into the line for about two. Tom McConnell, number 60, the nose guard, made the tackle for Harvard. And it looked like Yale was in motion. They're talking it over with Don Peterson, the defensive captain. Illegal motion on the offense. Mike Hosang, the, op, the man in motion that time, just opted to turn up just a little bit, a little bit before as you'll watch Hosang as he's going in motion from his left wingback spot towards the right side. He just turned up field just a half tick before, uh, you can't really see it on the replay, but that, that's, a common, that's a common motion penalty, particularly when the guy is going in motion away from the quarterback, can't hear the count that well. He's guessing that that's when the count was called, and he got caught that time. See how Yale reacts. Let's see if they try and throw the ball now since they're in this first and 15. I wouldn't bet on it. No, they're still in the two tight end setup. 7.50, and the clock is running, remaining in the first quarter. No score. Keeler with the keeper. Alou Jolson, he's inside the five and down near the four-yard line. Jim Bell made a touchdown-saving tackle for Harvard. Well, the little guy is averaging nearly four yards a carry. He was the Ivy League sophomore of the week in a ball game a couple of weeks ago against Dartmouth. He just did a great shake and bake on Henry Olsen to get good, solid yardage inside the five. They can pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown. Keeler, 25 yards rushing on this drive. Second down and four, just outside the four. Bryce leaps into the air, did not reach the goal line. He's about a yard and a half short. And this drive now eight minutes in duration, seven minutes to play first quarter. I've been very impressed with how Yale has moved it down. They've got two great offensive linemen in all Ivy, Jeff Rudolph, the biology major out of Pittsburgh, a great guard, and Art Coleman, the senior history major from Spring Valley, New York, 310 pounds at right tackle. I think I could run behind mm -hmm. those guys. Yale has had trouble scoring the past two weeks, as you saw. They're knocking on the door. This is the 17th play of the drive. Callahan, touchdown, Yale! Kevin Callahan up and over. And the Eli off to a 6-0 lead. A very impressive drive all on the ground for Yale. Watch Kevin Callahan. You want to talk about a vertical leap. Look at this. He almost goes untouched over the top of the pile. Rick McIntyre, the linebacker, got a little piece of him, but no way was he going to stop Callahan from reaching the end zone. Scott Walton out of the hold of Jim Griffin. And it is no good. The kick is wide to the right. A 17 play drive for Yale. And the Bulldogs lead six to nothing. It's been said Chrysler's LeBaron may be the most beautiful car to come out of an American design studio in over a decade. What hasn't been said is that it comes out with an intercooled 2.2 turbo with the security of four-wheel disc brakes and a driver's airbag standard, and that it comes out doing 0 to 60 in 7.9 seconds. One other thing that hasn't been said, it comes out at a very attractive price. A special report, a one-on-one -on -one discussion with a Payne Weber branch manager. What tax cut? 
That's what a lot of people who paid a lot more in income taxes this year are asking themselves. Nick, what can people do? First, they should begin now in preparing in ways of reducing their tax liability. And Payne Weber has some investment strategies that we think will help. Oh, so Payne Weber's got a lot of good gimmicks, huh? No, not gimmicks. Gimmicks suggest loopholes, and people have been hurt by gimmicks in the past. We're suggesting good conservative investment strategies that can reduce your tax burden and maximize your returns. Well, what does Payne Weber offer right now? Personal service. Uh -huh. We like to take an individual and analyze his individual situation to determine what is the best investment opportunity to meet his investment objective and reduce tax liabilities. I suggest that you call and ask for our new brochure on reducing your tax burden. It could save you a lot of money. For our booklet on year-end tax strategies, call Payne Weber at 800-950-5050. And here in the 105th meeting, Yale leads six to nothing. A very impressive drive, 17 plays. Kevin Callahan, the touchdown, from just more than a yard out. And the team that has scored first is 182 of the previous 104 V games. Well, so now Yale has got the first score, and one of their alums, George Bush, elected president. So all the factors are in place for the Eli's today. Todd Cowan who is the Yale punter, will kick off. Walton missed the extra point. It's his second extra point miss in 12 attempts this season. Cowan is a senior from Benton, Michigan. Good kick. There's really no breeze to speak of here this afternoon. David Haller running it back for Harvard to the 28-yard line. And Harvard finally gets the ball first and 10 at their own 28. And it's Tom Yoey, who's been out with a stress fracture of his left leg, back in action after being on the sidelines for two weeks. He's a senior playing in his final game. Tony Hines, the leading runner, and Alex Konovalchik in the backfield for Harvard. Jim Reedy is the wingback. The split end is six foot five Neil Phillips. The tight end leading receiver, Don Gajewski. The line anchored by Tony Consigli in the middle. The guards, all Ivy Maurice Prelo and John Sensky. The tackles, Gerald Mann and John Bartholomew. On first down, Hines having trouble, and he's thrown for a loss. Back at the 21-yard line. Robert Stokes, number 29, came up and made the play for the Yale defense. Watch it again. Watch the penetration by John Reese and Brian Hennon, the monster back forces Hines to retreat deep into the backfield and Bobby Stokes the cornerback as he should when he recognizes run stepped up and filled very nicely you can see emotionally that first touchdown meant a great deal to Yale loss of six quick count and the run went into the middle of the line for short yardage Jim Reedy Defensively, Bruce Bottorf, the big guy out of Florida, will anchor the defensive line. Glover Lawrence and Jim D'Onofrio, the tackles. The strength for Yale, the linebackers. On the outside, Mike Berry and John Hansberry. And the two leading tacklers, Captain Don Lund and John Reese. Brian Hennon now the monster back for Yale. Chris Brown, a good-looking youngster at safety. The cornerbacks, Bob Stokes and Rich Huff. Third down, 14, unlike... Yale, Harvard is capable of throwing the ball effectively, and they complete it for a first down. Mark Bianchi, number 22, with the catch, out at the 44-yard line, his 17th catch of the year. He's a junior from Natick, Massachusetts. A 20-yard game. Tom Yoey showing no problems with that injured left leg. You can see it is heavily padded and taped. Maybe not a picture-perfect spiral, but right between the deep man and the monster back for an important emotional first down for Harvard. Mark Bianchi out of the same high school that produced Doug and Darren Flutie. Natick High School. Playing for Coach Tom Lamb in a great high school program. Jim Reedy took a pop at the 47-yard line after a gain of three. Don Lund met him head on and Chris Brown was there as well. Reedy out of Situate, Massachusetts. He's a junior, government major here at Harvard, and he's playing more and more of late. Has really come on as the season has gone along. He had only one rushing attempt and no receptions to the first five games of the season. That was his 30th carry of the year, so he's seen a lot more action over the last half of the season. 
Second and seven. Yale leads six to nothing. They go for the quick hitter to Phillips. It's incomplete. Very nearly a lateral. It was just barely a forward pass, and Yale had that well covered. They knew that was coming, and it was fortunate for Yoey that it was too high for six foot five Neil Phillips. We can't emphasize enough here the situation for Tom Yoey. How long is he going to be able to play in this football game? Well, it depends on the pain threshold that the young man has. You got to keep in mind this is his last football game. He's not going to play after this. It's Harvard Yale. The pain threshold's going to be real high for Tom today. He's going to play as long as he possibly can. He goes for the quick hitter to Gajewski. He lost the football, and they roll it an incomplete pass. He never had possession, and Harvard will have to punt. John Reese made the play defensively for Yale. Good play call here. The little quick dump pass to the tight end as he slips behind Mike Berry. The pass was a little tall. Gajewski never with a chance to put it away because John Reese said, no, sir, fella. Alan Hall has been having his problems of late punting. His numbers were better earlier in the season. He doubles as the place kicker as well. And it's blocked. Rich Huff blocked it. Yale picks it up. Brian Hennon is going to go all the way. Touchdown, Yale. Blocked it. Brian Hennon scores the first touchdown of his career, and it's 12 0 for the Bulldogs. That is the third blocked punt of the season for the Yale Bulldogs, and it bounces up perfectly for Brian Hennon, who picks it up and marches it down into the end zone. Boy, I tell you, the people dressed in blue on the far side are going crazy. Four blocked punts this year by Yale. And all of a sudden, you have thrown out the game plan for Harvard. This has been their problem all year, turnovers. Yale will go for two after the previous extra point miss. And whistle stop the play. Keeler took a little bit of a bump from Peter Allen for good measure. Illegal procedure on the offense. See if that changes the strategy and they'll send the kicking team back out now. It will have to be eight yards to pick up two points. They wanted to quickly get in and snap the ball and catch Harvard who was really in a, a point a kick blocking mode if they could and unfortunately they didn't set themselves long enough so now Yale will go for the one point. They were trying to get the two to get back up to 14. This is a 25-yard extra point attempt. Walton missed the first one wide to the right. That one is good. Right down the middle. The fourth block punt of the season by Yale leads to the touchdown. And the Bulldogs off to a 13-0 lead. A lesson in Chevynomics. Make good use of Chevrolet's special option saver packages like this. A free automatic transmission, a $415 value, and I got it free with my new Cavalier. Plus, I saved another $800 on options like these, including air conditioning. Let's face it, when you get down to the bottom of things, the Cavalier, it's a great buy. Chevy Nomics. It adds up to more for less from your Fairfield County Chevy dealers. <laughs> Yeah, let's get out of this mess. Green call on the count of rain. Hey, kids, how are you? All right, the world champ, show you how it's done. Endorsed by the NBA, the Papa Shot home court advantage helps your game, improves your wrist action, eye-hand coordination, and is just plain fun for the whole family. Call 1-800-876-SHOT. Just the key. Looks can be deceiving. This is Chrysler's crystal key. A key to everything. It unlocks New Yorker's V6 and by lock brakes, the most advanced transmission, ultra drive. An abundance of rich Corinthian leather and better owner care than even Rolls or Mercedes. New Yorker's crystal key gives you the one thing you always wanted. Everything. The 
punting game cost Harvard a football game earlier in the season against Cornell. It may play a big role here again. Look at the extension by number 45, Rich Huff, to block the punt, the fourth punt block of the season for Yale. Brian Hennon goes 40 yards with the football for the touchdown to make it 13 to nothing Yale. And the whole story this season for Harvard, that graphic right there. With that punt, they have now turned the ball over 23 times in the last six ball games. You can't beat anybody when you're doing that. Yale has blocked four punts, and it's been one for one each for four different players. That was the first for Huff. Brian Hennon, who wound up picking it up and running it in, blocked a punt earlier this year. Chris Brown and Steve Essick, who was injured and not playing today, have the other punt blocks. A lot of very quiet Crimson fans mm -hmm. right now. If you're not dressed in blue, you're not very happy. Todd Cowan to kick off again. 341 to play first quarter. 13-0. Yale with the lead. David Haller breaks through. He's to the 45, the 50, and down in Yale territory at the 49-yard line. Longest kickoff return of the season for David Haller, the junior from Petersburg, Illinois, and he's used to running back kickoffs. That's a record you don't want to set because that meant that Penn was kicking off a lot last week when they scored 52 points against the Crimson. Great job by the wedge in front of David Haller. Cowan was able to slow him down. He's a linebacker in addition to a kicker. Otherwise, David Haller might have gone the distance. Is that why they call this the game? Because you don't so. know what to expect? Had a pretty interesting first period. We still have three and a half to play. And perhaps the momentum turned that Harvard needed. Let's check out the flags. The whistle stopped the play. Harvard has been going with a quick snap to try and pull Yale. I wonder if they weren't set long enough. You never cease to amaze me, Jack. Well, you know, that's that blind pig theory. That's you right. find it right once in a while. Illegal procedure, the call. It backs up Harvard five yards. Mark Bianchi brings the play in from Joe Restick. Restick calls the plays in the multi-flex offense, which he created and which he has taught to professional teams. Los Angeles Rams several years ago brought Joe Restick in to work with their offense. Harvard reeling coming in. They have Yoey back at quarterback, and it's the game. Yoey goes down the field and threw it away. Everybody well covered. Harvard had four receivers out in that pattern, and they were all in the same general vicinity. You're not talking about the big part of the field either. They rolled into the short side. That whole play looked funny from the start because it appeared that Tony Consigli snapped the ball before Yoey was ready for it. Historic Harvard Stadium. I remember playing here. This is some kind of facility to be in. It just, it is college football. Mm -hmm. On second down, Hines back into Yale territory and down at the 42-yard line. Hines has also been injured of late. He missed the Boston University game two weeks ago with a broken bone in his right hand. He suffered that injury three weeks ago against Brown. Came back to play against Penn last week fared quite well for himself despite playing with a cast on that right hand and leading what, rusher in Montana high school history I was gonna say and what a ball game he had last year at the Yale Bowl when Harvard won the Ivy League championship beating the Bulldogs 14 to 10 he was sensational scored both touchdowns for Harvard and rushed for 161 yards in that football game on third down Yoey with the fake the quick hitter Gajewski wide open First down, Harvard at the 28-yard line of Yale. Don Gajewski took the pass from Tom Yoey, and Harvard is on the move. Don Gajewski has really come on in this 1988 season to become the favorite target for Tom Yoey and the other Harvard quarterbacks. It was a play-action pass, and I got to tell you, Sean, only because it was play-action did Yoey have time to get rid of the ball because Yale was sending everybody, but they had to hold for a second because of the play fake. Don Gajewski only caught seven passes in high school, and he only, he'd only caught seven passes in his Harvard career before this season. He's now caught 38 this year, and the Yale defense caught Jim Reedy right at the line of scrimmage. Jim D'Onofrio slowed him up. 
That refers to Buddy Zachary, Yale's leading rusher, and it's been the ground game of Yale on the first drive and the block punt that has led to the 13 to nothing Yale lead in the final two minutes of the first quarter. Harvard on the move for the first time. Second down and nine at the Yale 27 yard line. Short drop. Phillips is open. And it's a short game. Gain of two to the 25. Rich Huff right there to make the tackle. Phillips doubles as a member of the basketball team. And the officials separate him from a couple of the Yale defenders. Harvard with three players this season with 30 or more receptions. You saw the numbers for Phillips. Gajewski now up to 38. And Hines came into the ball game with 35 catches. It's the first time in Harvard history that they've had three players with 30 or more catches, but it hasn't meant much when you're two and seven. Third and seven in this situation now, Sean. I'm wondering if we're in four down situations now for Harvard, already down 13 points. You know, can they afford to go for a field goal if they don't score on this play or don't get the first down on this play? Here comes Hines, a well-conceived play and a first down for Harvard. He lost the football. And there's a pile up at the 15. Looked like he was down, but no indication from the officials. Yes, on the far side, one of the officials is saying he was down now. Mm -hmm. Lover Lawrence indicating that Yale came up with the ball at the bottom of the pile, but the officials have ruled that Hines was down. I think for all the people who watched football on TV now, they know the ground cannot cause a fumble. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> You're right, though. Definitely a well-conceived play. Well, I tell you what, he lost that ball before he hit the ground. Yes, he did. Looked like Brian Hennon has been a big factor in the game thus far. Knocked it loose. Nonetheless, the play stands. A first down for Harvard at the 16. Reedy. Down near the 12 for a gain of nearly four. 13-0 Yale, and that will likely be the final play of the first quarter. Yale scored after a 17-play, 83-yard drive to begin the ball game. Kevin Callahan finished it with a one-yard run. Then Rich Huff blocked an Allen Hall punt. Brian Hennon picked it up and ran 40 yards for a touchdown. And it's 13-0 Yale at the end of the first quarter in the game here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Nature's light. Bathing fields of grain. Enriching full, fresh hops. Giving life to sparkling streams. Nourishing all the natural things that go into making Bud Light. The light beer that's beechwood aged for a clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. Announcing a dramatic breakthrough in shaving technology. The new Remington Microscreen Ultimate shaves as close as a blade and closer than any other electric shaver or your money back. The Ultimate's exclusive beard lifter gets whiskers other shavers leave behind. And like all Remington Microscreen shavers, the first screen shaves incredibly close, the second even closer. Try the new Remington Ultimate now. It will shave you as close as a blade and closer than any other electric shaver or your money back. Honey? <laughs> Douglas is going away to camp. So? So, so who's going to program the VCR? Panasonic understands. So this VCR is as simple to program as drawing a line. This Panasonic shows you what to do on screen. You can even use a phone to program this VCR. My parents don't need me anymore. They got a Panasonic VCR too, huh? <laughs> if it's Panasonic, it's easy to program. What Volvo knows about building cars, other companies would like to know. The expertise to develop such advances as an ingenious multi-link independent rear suspension and to incorporate a remarkable anti-lock braking system. And now Volvo's most coveted secrets are for sale. They can be found in the 760. ESPN Saturday Stampede. Unstoppable power unleashed every week. A thundering herd of the country's best college football teams colliding throughout the day live. 
see Major Harris and the West Virginia Mountaineers take on Syracuse. Then the Miami Hurricanes try to blow past LSU. Two great games live Saturday starting at 6 Eastern only on ESPN. A lot of well-known people all over the world very much interested in the result of this football game today. Bragging rights held in halls of government all over the world, in corporate boardrooms, and George Bush. I don't think he'd be too upset that we're showing his career statistics as a baseball player. First baseman at Yale. These are two-year statistics. He was the baseball captain. That's, the, of course, the famous Yale captain's photo, as Harvard does the same thing. They get that shot taken in the same spot all the time. And, the, you know, I think the Yale, you're on a sitting on a fence or something mm -hmm. with your Yale uniform politicians never sit on a fence though. well that's true well they hold well I don't know Yoey in trouble and Reese throws him down for a big loss back to the 17 yard line loss of nearly five on the play and third down is upcoming for Harvard John Reese the junior from West Babylon New York Several plays ago at the end of the first quarter, this play may loom very important as this drive continues. Chris Brown popped that ball loose from Tony Hines before he hit the ground, but the officials had ruled that he had hit the ground first, so it was a break for Harvard. The difference there, though, Sean, Yale was willing to gamble on third down, or second down defensively, different than Harvard did. Reedy in trouble in the backfield, and Reese drags him down again. John Reese making the big plays for Yale. He came into the game as their second leading tackler. Mike Berry also in on the play defensively for Yale, and the Yale defense holds. Trying to run the delayed counter play, and Mike Berry, number 69, the senior for Medford, Mass., came through and slowed down Jim Reedy right here. Watch number 69. Doesn't make the play, but he slowed him down long enough for John Reese to come flying through and break up the play, force the field goal try, and Harvard having a problem getting all their people out. They're going to have to burn a timeout. They had about 10 seconds left, but the holder, Rod McLeod, signaled for a timeout, and Allen Hall will have to wait. Those numbers add up to 8 for 12 in total field goal attempts this year for Allen Hall with a long of 47. Scores from around the country. Wow. But Notre Dame wasn't a surprise, but Michigan a big lead over Ohio State. Virginia trying to end the season well. Maryland was in the hunt for a while for the ACC title. Duke is playing without their coach today. Steve Spurrier was suspended for a game. Was not allowed to be at the game because of his criticism about the officials in a game last week. That's something I had never heard of before. How about that? He was allowed to be with the team up until an hour before the game. Then he had to leave the stadium. <laughs> We will have updates of the game in Ithaca between Cornell and Penn for the Ivy League title. That game just getting started. Hall trying from 32 yards. McLeod is the holder. Allen Hall's kick is good. A 32-yard field goal from Allen Hall has Harvard on the board. 13-36 to play in the first half. Yale leads by 10. We're not a company, but no company has more pride in what they do, or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future, one that goes far beyond the ordinary, one that brings with it the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Air Force, the Marines, the Army, the Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. You might think owning a car this luxurious would be prohibitively expensive. But don't be fooled, because this car was recently rated the best overall value of any European car in its class, which makes the Volvo 740 something rare indeed. See you later, Dad. A luxury sedan for people who don't consider any of their income disposable.
Today's game is being brought to you by Volvo, a car you can believe in. By Atra Plus, Gillette made it smoother. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And a great start to the football game here in Cambridge as you look at Handsome Dan, the 13th, the Yale mascot, another of the many traditions involved in this rivalry. Handsome Dan, the 13th, was donated to Yale by Mrs. Edward Curtis in oh. memory of her father, Arthur Keller, Yale class of 1925. When did that all begin? Handsome Dan goes back to 90, uh, 90, 98 years, rather. Goes wow. back 98 years, the original Handsome Dan came to Yale in 1889. He enjoyed a 10-year tenure, but after a while, you have to go for Handsome Dan number two and three. That's the way life is. There you go. And how many years is that in dog years, right? Now that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I'll leave it to the Cornell guy, you, oh, to okay. figure that out. <laughs> Harvard kicks off. Zachary fields it. He finds a seam. And he's out to the 33. Plenty of action here in the first half. Lots of wide open plays on both sides of the field. And Harvard finally on the board after 10 play drive. And they got three points, but they have to feel disappointed. They had a great shot for six or seven or even eight. Yeah, that, that penalty and then the sack on second down hurt them, but they had to come away with some points, so they at least have that going for them. They got to stop Yale. They've not shown the ability to do that thus far. On first down, Zachary crossed the 35 and went out to the 37-yard line for a gain of about four. Harm Koza, like George Bush, has baseball in his background. He played professional baseball for a couple of organizations. From the cradle of coaches, Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. They've had a tough year. <laughs> 13 to 3 Yale. 13 minutes to play first half. Kevin Callahan, a sophomore, plunged into the line for a short gain. Callahan's a sophomore out of Elgin, Illinois. Let's say hello to Tim Brando. Hello, Sean McDonough. Penn State and Notre Dame, the fighting Irish out of the gates in a hurry. Watch Mark Green, 22 yards down the sidelines. That made it 14 0 Irish at the time. They're now leading that one. And Oh, by the way, Columbia leading Brown 14 to nothing, guys. On third down and four, Darren Keeler. Flag down. If the play stands, Keeler appears to have a first down out at the 44 yard line, but it was thrown where you would expect holding. On the run, on the offense. Kevin Callahan, the fullback, was trying to block Don Peterson, who holds the Harvard record for sacks in a season. And he got caught outside of the rules of the game, if you will. Keeler was trying to go deep to Pete Caravella on a flag pattern. So now Yale will be set up in a third and long situation, and an obvious passing set up here. Mm -hmm. Keeler is a lot like another little guy who played quarterback in this area when Doug Flutie played at Boston College, where he sometimes has a tendency to float the ball, doesn't have the, the strength in his arm that Flutie had, and that's why they hesitate to have him throw the ball, particularly over the middle because of the tendency to throw the floater. He has not thrown a pass yet. And there was movement, and the flags and whistles stopped the play. We played. 18 minutes and nine seconds, and Yale has not attempted a pass. And they're marching the wrong way. Buddy Zachary, who was out as a wide receiver, as they had three wide receivers to the wide side of the field, moving a little bit too quick. Now they will bring in a whole host of new bodies to try and get the ball up there. Let's see if they go in that three back set up again. Now they go to a one back with three wide receivers. On third and 19, Keeler to attempt his first pass. 
He throws, and it is incomplete. Intended for Mike Hosang, Henry Olsen had the coverage, and Keeler threw that up in an area where it was anybody's football. Like I told you, they hesitate to have Keeler throw the ball up the middle of the field. That was a good example why. So Todd Cowan on the punt for the first time this afternoon. His average has improved over last season when he averaged 27 yards a punt. So he's improved by five yards a punt. A wobbly kick. Fielded by Tony Molinari, and he's tackled immediately by Mike Barry, who has been a terror on special teams all season long. Opponents against Yale have returned 23 punts for a total of only 27 yards this season. Back in a moment. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah, too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. What are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? Yeah, really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? For young men and women in the armed forces, it's a great place to start. See a local military recruiter. <laughs> idea behind the Volvo 740 turbo wagon. Gillette has changed the face of shaving. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. Atra Plus. Its Lubra Smooth Strip actually releases lubricants to glide the razor more smoothly. Incredible smoothness from the first stroke to the last. The Atra Plus system. First we made it closer, then we made it smoother. actually across the Charles River from the Harvard Yard and the Harvard campus. This stadium is really in Brighton, Massachusetts on the Alston Brighton line right across the river. You could hit a three wood over to Cambridge. Jim Rainey on first down out to the 45 yard line. Good yardage on first down. It'll be about a five iron for Bob Lanning, our <laughs> director, but it'll be a three wood for me. And that was I don't know. Jack Corgan wedge eight yards. There you go. I don't know if the Yale coaches have picked it up yet, but I was noticing on first and ten they like to give the ball to Jim Reedy and our fine technical crew at the isolation that time on the Harvard wing back who picked up good yardage. He's going to pick up seven eight yards. I'd keep giving it to him on first down as well. Jim Reedy has the longest run the longest reception and the longest kickoff return for Harvard this year. Yoey with the fake looking for Gajewski and looking to throw it away. He was wrapped up by Scott Wallum number 60. It's ruled an incomplete pass. Wallum the junior from Brooksville Florida once again here's Tim Brando Sean showdown Saturday continues and Michigan meeting Ohio State and watch Leroy Horde he had just had a touchdown run called back get it right the second time Leroy 18 yards it's now 17 nothing Wolverines let's get back to the game where handsome Dan handsome Jack and handsome Sean are standing by <laughs> There is a resemblance to Handsome Dan for the two of us, unfortunately. Yoey, the quick hitter, Gajewski wide open in Yale territory and down at the 28-yard line. Chris Rutan made the tackle. Rich Huff there as well. A 26-yard gain for Harvard. And they're on the move, trying to pull closer. They trail by 10. Great play call by Joe Restick. Third and short yardage. The play action dumped to the tight end. Gajewski reads it well and says, hey, I'm going to keep going up the field because there's a bubble between the safety men and the linebackers. Picks up better than 25 yards. And Harvard's down in four-down territory again, threatening to score. First and 10 at the Yale 28. Ten minutes to play in the first half. Reedy again gets the call on first down. And short yardage that time. Gain of perhaps two to the 26. 
Just less than 10 minutes to play now in the half. Yale led 10 to nothing, or rather 13 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Harvard with the only points here in the second quarter on a 32-yard field goal by Allen Hall. And they're on the move again. I wonder how many Harvard-Yale games that gentleman has seen. Part of the big crowd here in Boston. <laughs> he didn't want to smile. No. The lady was trying to get him to smile, and he said, no, he didn't want to smile. Tony Hines a big hole. He's into the secondary. And he's down at the 10-yard line. Rich Huff made the tackle. Tony Hines, 161 yards last year against Yale. He picked up 17 with that carry. Well, for you longtime football devotees, this is old double wing football action there. You saw the counter fakes and then the wing back reverse. Tony Hines lining up as the wing back there. He had the Yale defense going every which way. One thing about Joe Restick's multi flex offense you want to see something different? Just pay attention. Tony Hines' father, Jeff, played football here at Harvard. Hines again inside the 10 and out of bounds near the six-yard line. Don Lund took him out of bounds. Lund, 17 solo tackles last year in the game in the losing effort for Yale in the championship game, as it turned out in the Ivy League a year ago. Today, it's Penn and Cornell playing for the Ivy League title in Ithaca for the second time in three years. Penn's trying to go undefeated, 10 and 0 for the second time in three years. We'll have updates throughout the day for you on that ball game, which is just underway at Sholkoff Field. Second down, seven. Hines again. At that time, he got very little yardage. John Reese comes up from the bottom of the pile. And a big play facing Tom Yoey, Joe Restick. And the Harvard offense. Joe Restick, the president of the American Football Coaches Association. He has a lot of very strong opinions on many of the crucial issues facing college football, including agents and drug testing. And his team in a big spot right here. Third down and seven. They can pick up a first down at the one. The option, the pitch to Hines. Touchdown! Tony Hines, a seven-yard touchdown run. And it's 13-9. Yale with a four-point lead. The extra point still to come. What a block by Jim Reedy, the wingback. Watch the right side of your screen. They run the option to the wingback side. Watch right there. Just a great block on Rich Huff by Jim Reedy. Tony Hines untouched into the end zone. We've got ourselves a game. Ball to try the extra point. He's a perfect 17 for 17 this year in that category. And he is still perfect. And the momentum is on the side of Harvard. It's 13 to 10 Yale, 7.35 to play first half. Lunch? Thanks, but I already went. Had lots of errands to do. Oh, I got a prescription filled, found the perfect gift for Sally, picked up some school supplies for Billy, got toothpaste, paper towels, and Band-Aids, and dropped off my film. No, I didn't drive all over town. I went to Brody Drug. They're open every day of the year, and parking's a breeze. I get all my prescriptions filled there. Brody accepts all major insurance plans and bills them directly. They even deliver if I can't get out of the office. Yes, I'm serious. Sure, that's Brody Drug, 275 Ferry Boulevard, right here in Stratford. You know, thrifty car rent was thrifty price for everyone. Wow, Hammer, this is a good deal. Sign it. It's an offer you can't refuse. Sign it. Why don't you get a larger car to entertain friends? Now I'll sign it. In Bridgeport, rent the all-new Chrysler New Yorker, just $34.95 a day at Thrifty. No advance reservation required. Go ahead, make my reservation. It's simple. Call 1-800-FOR-CARS. Advanced Volvo ever requires some technical assistance to properly show its multi-link independent rear suspension, the brain center of its anti-lock braking system, the power of an intercooled turbo, and the engineering responsible for its driver's side airbag. But the Volvo 780 isn't just state-of-the-art, it's art.
Yale jumped out to a 13-0 lead at the end of the first quarter, but Harvard has scored 10 unanswered points here in the second quarter, and it's 13-10. In the battle for the Ivy League title in Ithaca, New York, Penn and Cornell scoreless early in the second quarter. We can tell you that the Quakers are on the move. Penn is driving, and at the moment is at the Cornell 16-yard line. Elsewhere in college football on this big weekend of traditional rivalries, that's a big one down in South Carolina. Princeton and Ivy League play trying to end the season on a high note, and Columbia possibly sending Brown to a winless season. And if Columbia wins, they won't finish last for the first time in, what, six, seven years at least. It'll be their second win of the year. Brown, a tie against Yale in the first game of the season. And all losses since. John Rosenberg's club 0-8-1 going into that season finale against Columbia in New York. Buddy Zachary started at the 10. And he finishes at the 26. First and 10 Yale. The momentum on the side of Harvard. And let's see here, Sean, if Yale deviates at all. Keep in mind, this is only their third possession. They had that long 17-play drive in the first quarter for the first touchdown, then did not see the ball again until the second quarter. They looked like they were moving for a first down, got the holding penalty, and it backed them up, and they had to punt, and Harvard came right down. Let's see if they try and do some different things here. They start out in the wishbone and then shift. <laughs> Yale has attempted only one pass. It was an incomplete pass. Callahan, the fullback, right up the middle and out to the 30-yard line for a gain of four. What a great day of college football we have here on ESPN today. It started early with BC and Army over in Dublin. It continues at 6 o'clock Eastern time this evening. The battle for the Lambert Trophy for supremacy in the East, Syracuse against West Virginia. And at 9 o'clock tonight, the Miami Hurricanes against LSU, Tim Brando will be an interested spectator for that one, we are sure, although he's interested throughout the game. All of the games. Zachary, the carry. And the first down. Out of bounds, but there is a flag down. Zachary moved it out to the 38-yard line, but a flag thrown back near the line of scrimmage, and it's a holding, holding call against the Yale. run by the offense. Yale was error-free for the most part in their very impressive opening drive. These last two possessions, they have cost themselves two first downs because of penalties. And you can see the number of penalties Yale has already incurred in this football game. They can't afford that, especially the 10-yarders, because they can't throw the football. Well, anytime that you lose it, you take away that first down. That's what they they want to be in first and ten, second and short situations. Harvard has to take the penalty here because mm -hmm. they've got the first down. A little question they're going to take the penalty. The interesting thing will be to see if Harvard now tries to gamble on defense. This is the time for them to stop Yale right here, get good field position, go down and take the lead perhaps because they've got the confidence, they've got the momentum right now. Ball placed at the 24-yard line. It's second down and 12. Callahan tackled immediately. He got across the 25 and out near the 26 for a gain of almost two. Greg Hubert, number 56, the senior from Worthington, Ohio, and an economics major at Harvard made the tackle. He doubles as a pitcher for the Harvard baseball team. And not only is he the leading tackler, but he's a pretty good pitcher. He threw a one-hitter against the Northeastern University Huskies last spring. Greg Hubert's brother, Kevin, plays baseball at Columbia. Third down, 11 yards to go for Yale first down. Keeler looks to throw for the second time, under pressure, and dropped back at the 20. Jim Bell playing in his final game. He grew up right in the shadow of the Yale Bowl. He's from Branford, Connecticut, in suburban New Haven. A 30-yard field goal by Rich Friedenberg has given Penn a 3-0 lead over Cornell early in the second quarter at Ithaca in the Ivy League championship game. That play a loss of five, and on fourth and 16, Cowan punts. Last time they sent 10 men. This time it looks like Harvard wants to set up a return. Yep. Nose up spiral. Molinari fields it. And guess who's there? Mike Barry, and he was there too soon, apparently. Apparently he did not give Molinari enough room to 
make the catch because flags flew immediately right at the spot where Tony Molinari fielded the punt. And if that goes against Yale, Harvard's going to have great field position. As it is, it's very good field position at the Yale 49. They're going to pick the... Uh, I never saw him signal for a fair catch. with the oh, opportunity you're right. for fair catch, five yards. He pointed the wrong way. Whether it's a fair catch or not, you still have to give him the give opportunity. Him the you see Molinari coming for the football because the nose was up. It's drifting back. And you can see Mike Berry trying to hold up. Well, that's a tough call. That's a real tough call there. They call interference in the fair catch, but he, he never signaled for the fair no. catch. He did not. If he did signal for the fair catch, it was he had very to early. Space, yeah, that's right. There was no fair catch signal there. That's what the announcement was. First down, Harvard. Only a five yard penalty to the 44. And Hines pulls forward. He was hit originally at the 40, but he put his head down and pulled forward for about three more yards down to the 37 yard line. Hines and Rich Huff with the meeting of the minds, if you will. And Mr. Huff got up and now is back down on the turf and being attended to by the Yale medical staff. Tom Yoey has played well with that stress fracture in his left leg. Other than the fact that he has been taking the short drop, Sean, we have not seen Tom have any real difficulty in, in doing the job. He holds just about every record there is for a quarterback here at Harvard. Tom Yoey is Harvard's all-time leading career passer. He came into this game with 4,328 yards in passing. Larry Brown, the class of 79 at Harvard, was second. And he had 2,704. So Yoey, far and away, is the leading all-time rusher in Harvard history. Rich Huff starting to get up. Yale leads 13 to 10, but Harvard is on the move again. Den wine. Every glass is sheer pleasure, pure enjoyment, and that's all a great wine was ever meant to be. Almaden, for the sheer pleasure of it. The Transamerica Pyramid. You'll find it wherever there's a need for financial services. Whether it's property and casualty insurance in Dallas, life insurance in New York, consumer loans in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, or commercial financing in Chicago. You see, our home may be in San Francisco, but our heart is everywhere. Transamerica, the power of the pyramid is working for you. ESPN is your ticket to the NFL when the Patriots and Dolphins go head to head. The Patriots pack the punch on their playoff drive that leaves opponents red, white, black, and blue. The Dolphins' Dan Marino connects with the Marx Brothers, Duper and Clayton, and offense is the secret word. The New England Patriots and Miami Dolphins battle head-to-head -head on NFL Sunday Night Football at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. Sean McDonough and Jack Corrigan back at the game, the 105th meeting between Yale and Harvard here at Harvard Stadium in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yale leads 13 to 10, but Tom Yoey has the Crimson on the move. Second down, three at the Yale 37. Yoey cuts it outside, or rather Hines cut it outside. Hines may go all the way. He's knocked out of bounds by Rutan, who saved the touchdown. Tony Hines is starting to take over the game for Harvard. He was a bit slow to get up along the far sideline, a 22-yard game. A little misdirection. They send everybody left, and Hines breaks it back to the right side. Jimmy Parsons, the cornerback, in for the injured Rich Huff. There's no match for Hines. It takes Chris Rutan, the monster back, to come over and slam him out of bounds. But Harvard is down inside the Yale 15-yard line, and Hines is on his way to a 100-yard-plus afternoon. First and 10 at the 13-yard line of Yale. Hines again. Down to the nine. 450 to play. First half. Yale 13. Harvard 10. Well, 
When we came into this season, Sean, Harvard was the preseason favorite to win the Ivy League, and they've had a, a tough year, and most especially because of this offense. They, they, they expected to do so much. They have had more yardage than any other Harvard offense. It's been the turnovers, but they have been error-free with the exception of the block punt today. That's why they're moving the ball. Times, short game, two yards to the seven. And we mentioned earlier the defense giving up nearly 30 points a game. But I think that's just a, a, a carry-on from the turnovers. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you, uh, coaches like to call the plus-minus category. How many turnovers have we created? How many turnovers have we caught? You know, have we done ourselves? And Harvard comes into the game minus 12. You know, when you're putting that much pressure on your defense, you're going to give up points. Again, the Penn Cornell score into the second quarter there in Ithaca. Penn attempted a field goal originally, and the kick missed. But a roughing the kicker call was made against Cornell, so Penn tied again, and Friedenberg kicked it from 30 yards. On third down, a big play, and Ewing goes down. Mike Barry, the senior from Medford, just across the river from Medford, Massachusetts, with lots of friends and family in the stadium today. Mike Barry, his career beset by injuries. It's the first fully healthy season he's had, and he's had a great year. That's his team-leading eighth sack of the season. They try to run a bootleg, and here comes Mike Berry. Tom Yoy gets a face full of Berry, and then Glover Lawrence comes along to finish off the story. Harvard again with a substitution. For, no, this time it's Yale with the substitution problem on the field goal try, so the Bulldogs call the timeout with 3.07 to play here in the first half. Harvard will be lining up to attempt a field goal to tie the game. Yale leads 13-10, to 10, 3.07 to play in the second quarter. Paul is already connected from 32 yards out in the game. That's that a, game. Whew, that is the great rivalry between Lehigh and Lafayette. If it's not the longest continuous rivalry in college football, it is one of them. I believe it might be the longest continuous rivalry. I think you're rivalry. right. I mean, you're talking the first game was way back in the 1870s. As we've been mentioning, a huge day in this college football season, and Tim Brando will keep you posted of all the goings on. 5.30 Eastern Time, the college football scoreboard. And at 6, it's Syracuse and West Virginia, and at 9 Eastern Time, Miami and LSU. I'm going to get my partner's prediction on his alma mater's battle with unbeaten West Virginia. I think I know who he's going to I pick. won't surprise you. The attempt to tie the game from 34 yards is good. A flag down, and it looked like they roughed the holder. Rod McLeod got up limping. Allen Hall connected from 34 yards. And let's see what the call is. It was fourth and 14, so if it was a 15-yard penalty, it would be a first down. Although it might be once they get inside the 20, half the distance, and they'd come up a bit short. And you don't like to take points off the scoreboard generally if you are. Chuck Bray was the guy who was flying through trying to block Allen Hall's field goal try. It will be an automatic first personal down with foul, the personal foul. Roughing the holder, half the distance, and a first down. And will Harvard accept it? Well, it's it an automatic like first will. down. Yeah, they're going to take it. Watch number 82, Chuck Bray. He is coming right up the middle to try. I don't know how he missed this ball because it goes right through his arms. And Smack. he lands on top of the holder, Rod McLeod. Now, had Bray gotten a piece of the football, there would have been no roughing penalty. But because it somehow went through his arms, the half the distant but automatic first down penalty. Harvard says, hey, we want to take the lead. We don't want the right. tie. So they've got it first and goal inside the 10. They take the three points off the board, and they take the first and goal from the eight. 13 to 10, Yale leads. Hines slipped and fell. No gain on the play. Mike Barry was the closest Yale defender as Hines tried to make his cut. Harvard is an unusual running attack in that Running attacks basically like to run to the wide side of the field. Harvard likes to run to the short side of the field. When they've got the ball in the hash mark, they like to run towards the boundary. That time, 
Hines losing his footing, wasn't able to go anywhere, but they did have a hole there. The final two and a half minutes of the first half. Reedy, touchdown! An eight-yard touchdown run for Jim Reedy, and Harvard has the lead for the first time in the game. The decision to take the penalty was the correct call for Joe Restick of the Crimson. That was that double wing counter again. Coaches are creatures of habit. Yale knows that Harvard likes to run the ball to the short side. They line up like they're going to run it to the short side and come back with a counter. Reedy did a good job of getting it in the end zone. Allen Hall's extra point is good. 17 unanswered points for the Crimson of Harvard. They lead 17 to 13. Everybody expecting Tony Hines to get the ball there. They run back on the inside wing back counter. Alex Konovalchik with a great block, the fullback on Mike Berry. Watch it again on the left-hand side of your screen. Watch Konovalchik number 43. No, I take it back. It is not Konovalchik. It is the pulling guard, Sean Sinski. Number 62, the senior from Bessemer, Pennsylvania. An economics major who made a most economical block here for Harvard. Boom on Mike Berry right there. And Reedy getting north-south as quickly as he can. You can't fool around running sideline to sideline in the scoring zone. And Jim Reedy with a touchdown that has put Harvard on top. His fourth touchdown of the season, as we mentioned, he was really a non-factor on the Harvard offense over the first half of the season. Just one carry and no receptions through the first five games. And over the last five, he has been a key performer for the Harvard offense. He rushed for 60 yards last week against Penn and had the best day of his career two weeks ago against Boston University when he rushed for 76 yards and had four catches for 97. Would not be surprised to see Mr. Brubaker come in at quarterback. Kickoff handled by Bryce. Big hole up the middle and out to the 37-yard line. The quarterback will be Mark Brubaker. He is the better passer of the two. Keeler leads the running attack very well. But Brubaker is the better passer, and Yale now facing a deficit. Only 2.14 to play in the half. They need points in a hurry, and they'll try to throw it. The Harvard drive that gives the Crimson the lead. Seven plays, 44 yards. And it started with the interference call on the opportunity to make a fair catch, which did not appear to be signaled by Tony Molinari of Harvard. Zachary, a short gain on first down out to the 39-yard line. Gain of just a little bit more than two. Darren Keeler has gone to the sideline. Both teams have two timeouts remaining here. Yale going without the huddle. Mark Brubaker dumps it off to Bryce. He has a first down for Yale. At the Eli 48-yard line, 144 to play. One pass and one completion for Mark Brubaker. The knock on Brubaker, Sean, is that he he doesn't look off his intended receiver. Where he wants to throw, he's on him from the get-go. Brubaker throws. It's caught for a first down. Pete Caravello with the catch. The junior from Fairfield, New Jersey, with his first catch of the day, a 12-yard gain. And Yale is on the move. First and 10 at the Harvard 38, 134 to play. First half. Harvard 17, Yale 13. Drew Baker looking to throw again. He does throw and it is incomplete. Nearly intercepted by Greg Hubert and Bobby Frame had a shot at it for Harvard as well. And just as I said, Sean, he was looking at Jim Griffin all the way. Number 56, Greg Hubert, the linebacker, settling into his zone, watching the quarterback's eyes set right in front Along with Bobby Frame, the strong safety, he was right there for the football. That's Brubaker's problem. You saw in his graphics a few moments ago that he has thrown 10 interceptions this year. That's his problem. He lets the defense know where he's going, and if he can't deliver it at the right moment, it gets picked off. 
Drew Baker, a senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, out of Thomas Jefferson High School. Hands off on the draw to Bryce. Gaping hole. First down and much more. Bryce down on the 12-yard line. First down, Yale, with a minute 16 to play in the half. A 26-yard game. Boy, what a cut in the open field by Kevin Bryce. That was just a remarkable run. Now Yale goes back into a huddle. Chris Plunkett comes in with a play from the sidelines. They've, with the two timeouts, they now have plenty of time. Watch this cut again as he gets into the secondary and just froze Tony Molinari and picked up another 10 yards after the cut. Another delay. This time, Harvard was not fooled. Jim Bell made the hit on Kevin Bryce, who gained a yard. Jim Bell, senior from Brantford, Connecticut, a government major at Harvard, worked for the FBI this summer. Restick looks on as Yale goes without a huddle. 42 seconds, and the clock is running to play in the half. Yale trying to reclaim the lead. Brubaker nearly intercepted. Poor choice by Brubaker, and Bobby Frame nearly picked it off. Well, you're being charitable when you said poor choice. He had no business throwing this football anywhere but about the 30th row of the grandstands. There were four Harvard defenders in the area. Yale got very lucky there that they didn't have a costly turnover deep in Harvard territory. They've got to come away with points here. And I think they're going to have to use a timeout because the Yale coaching staff took an awfully long time to send Jim Griffin in with the play, and the clock is down to nine seconds, and they're still in the huddle. Five seconds left on the play clock, and Brubaker does call a timeout. Don't want to blatantly criticize anyone, but that was clearly the fault of the Yale coaching staff. They held Jim Griffin, who came in with the play, along the sideline until less than 15 seconds remained on the play clock. By the time Brubaker got it and relayed the information to the rest of the offense, they had no time to get the play off. Amazing what happens when you just make the defense respect the pass or think about the pass just a little bit. Coming up next, it's the Hall of Fame tip-off classic. Live from Springfield, Massachusetts, just a couple of hours west. Basketball returns to the city where the game was invented as the Duke Blue Devils take on the Kentucky Wildcats. Duke number one in several preseason college basketball holes. Andy Ferry, mm -hmm. one of the real good ones. Kentucky, I think, is going to be glad they're playing basketball yes. and getting out of the headlines. Don't forget the college football scoreboard show. Tim Brando will have all of the scores on this tradition-rich third weekend of November. This is the weekend of all the great rivalries. That will come up after the basketball game and before Syracuse, West Virginia. And you think it's going to be a big upset in Morgantown, huh? I really believe that it is. Of course, you wouldn't have it any other way for your Syracuse, the Syracuse Orangemen. Orangemen. I was in Syracuse last night for the basketball game against LaSalle, which the folks saw here on ESPN, and people in Syracuse and Morgantown ready for that great battle. From the shotgun, Brew Baker on third down and nearly 10. Screen, Callahan has blockers. Callahan has a touchdown. What a call by the Yale coaching staff. They wasted the timeout, but it was worth the effort as the screen had Harvard fooled an 11-yard touchdown pass, and Yale is back on top with 29 seconds to play in the half. I saw them working this play yesterday in practice, and I said, boy, if they run this at the right moment, it's going to be perfect, and they picked the perfect moment. Look at the pressure coming in on Mark Brubaker, the blockers in front of him, and for the second time, Kevin Callahan shows you his vertical leaping ability as he plunges into the end zone. And Yale is again going to go for two. They bring Keeler back into the ball game to run for two. And they go to the wishbone. Right now it's 19 to 17. Yale with the lead. The option. Keeler didn't get there. Stopped the yard short. Mike Murphy made the tackle for Harvard. Big number 70. The defensive tackle for the Crimson. Kevin Callahan, second touchdown of the game, gives Yale the lead. It's 19 to 17. You see Don Peterson come flying in, and the wall is perfect. Great block on Bobby Frame, thrown by Mike Ciotti, the center. That was the key block that enabled Callahan to accelerate. Mark Brubaker says, yes, sir. 
That is only the third passing touchdown this season by a Yale quarterback. And they've thrown 16 interceptions. But this is the game and the stats. And it doesn't don't matter. Mean a thing. We've had a pretty interesting first half. We're going to be gearing up for an even better second half. And the way this game has gone, 29 seconds, that's plenty of time for Harvard to do <laughs> something right. before the half is over. Not quite the 35-30 score we saw at the half for no. Lehigh and Lafayette. That great game going on today. Officially, it's been ruled a 12-yard reception. And if you keep track of such things, and a nifty drive. Eight plays, 64 yards, and it took just a minute and 53 seconds with Brubaker at the helm. And you made the very astute point, Sean, about a little bit of success throwing the football loosened up the defense. They got the long run by Kevin Bryce, and they score the touchdown. Todd Cowan will kick off. Had nobody ever called you astute before. No. <laughs> I still don't know what that means. Fielded by Mark Blazetti, number 87. This will give Harvard good field position if they want to go for more points. And why not? 24 seconds to play. And two timeouts left for the Crimson. They'll get it first and 10. Just inside their own 41-yard line. We'll check in in just a few moments with Tim and Bino. Scores and highlights from around the country. On this Saturday of college football, the most important Saturday of the season. If they want to go deep, Neil Phillips would be the obvious choice. The basketball co-captain has got good size and excellent speed. They will put he and Reedy out wide to the right. They go on the ground, and Hines didn't get anything. And will Harvard use the timeout? Doesn't appear so. They're letting it run. A little surprised by this because Harvard's going to get the ball to start the second half as well. I mean, so you've got nothing to lose here. Well, one completion and you're in field goal range. That's Allen right. Hall has converted twice this season from 47 yards. That's a bit mystifying. They had excellent field position. They had timeouts, but they elected not to do anything with it. Nonetheless, a wide open first half of football in the 105th meeting of the game. A back and forth half, and Yale leads Harvard 19 to 17. Once again, here's Tim Brando. All right, Sean McDonough, thank you very much. By far the most entertaining first half we've had all year in our Ivy League games, 19-17 the score. All right, we've got a lot coming up. We've got highlights from uh, Showdown Saturday, including the Notre Dame-Penn State game, along with Michigan and Ohio State, scores and highlights of all other games. But first, let's bring you up to date on some current scores in the Ivy League. And, of course, everyone outside of the game nationally is looking in on this Penn-Cornell game for the Ivy League title. Right now, Penn with a 3-0 lead. Rich Frindenberg has a field goal in that ball game. Now, Princeton has a 10-0 lead over Dartmouth. That game now in the second quarter. Judd Garrett with a 12-yard touchdown run. And Brown and Columbia. Boy, it had been a long time since Columbia had been less than a three-point favorite. You have to go back all the way to 81 to find that. Right now, it's 14-7. We can update that score. Brown has just scored, but the Lions have the lead in that ball game. All right, lots more to come. We'll even hear from Dick Vitale and John Saunders from the Tip-Off Classic when we continue here at halftime. take better pictures? Get the new Canon EOS 750, the only autofocus SLR with a flash like this and a system with computers and motors in every lens. Here, try it. Try the zoom. Easy, right? Well, that's EOS. New Canon EOS 750. Photography, pure and simple. 
Buy eels today with no money down, low monthly payments at participating Canon dealers. No matter how you drive, drive your engine clean with Mobile Super Unleaded Gasoline. Its high-octane detergent formula can unclog fuel injectors and give your car a new injection of power. For top performance, drive your engine clean with Mobile Super Unleaded. High-octane with a plus. Tim Brando back in our college football studios. It is showdown Saturday, and let's start by talking about the nation's number one team, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, against Say It Ain't So, Joe Paterno's club, struggling at 5-5 five and five this year. Tony Rice, a little play fake, and watch him outrun the defense here. That capped an 88-yard drive, 7 nothing Irish. Penn State driving until Lance Larnigan's pass. Watch this. It's batted in the air by Arnold Ale right there to Jeff Alm, an Arnold Ale to Alm act. The interception, his third of the year. Then the Irish racked up a lot of yards. Raheem Ishmael with a nice downfield block against the Nittany Lion, and that will set free Mark Green and the Irish out to the 14-3 lead at that point. And Notre Dame right now, always struggling against Penn State, it seems, over the years. Right now, Joe Paterno's team hanging tough, 14-3 at Notre Dame. Michigan and Ohio State, and the Buckeyes, of course, got that revenge victory a year ago for Earl Bruce, who was the outgoing coach at the time. Here's what's happening today. Demetrius Brown, the left-hander, unloads the long ball to Greg McMurtry. 57 yards. Wolverines 10-0 into one. After running back Leroy Horde had had a run call back, he gets the call in the very next play. Get it right the second time, Mr. Horde. 18 yards. Wolverines go up 17-0. A second left now in the first half. Mike Gillette had missed a 37-yard early on. 56 yards. A little redemption in Columbus, Ohio for Gillette. And right now, the Wolverines are getting it done 20 to nothing over the Buckeyes of Coach John Cooper. Now, Clemson and uh, South Carolina, 9-0. That game now in the second quarter. On to the Big Ten we go, where Wisconsin is playing Michigan State. And in that conference, Wisconsin coming off a win a week ago, and they're now trailing the Spartans 17 to nothing. who apparently are Gator Bowl bound. John Langlow has a field goal in that game. Indiana and Purdue, 7 to nothing in favor of the Hoosiers. They've been floundering a bit of late. Freddie Akers club down by 7. On to the ACC, where Maryland and Virginia are underway, and the Wahoos have a 16 to 7 lead that game in the third quarter. And a couple of big, big plays in that game for Virginia. Duke. Without Steve Spurrier, because he was unhappy with officiating in that 43-43 tie against NC State last week, right now the Blue Devils leading 28-14 over Mac Brown's Tar Heels. NC State 7-3 over Pitt. That game in the second quarter. On to Wake Forest now. The Demon Deacons apparently headed to the Independence Bowl. 14-14 against Appalachian State. Tennessee and Kentucky, the Vols, Hoping to get some W's for Johnny Majors. 14 to 7 to score Jeff Francis a 12-yard touchdown pass. Texas A&M without Jackie Sherrill, who pulled out as coach, even though he remains the athletic director right now. 6 to nothing over TCU as Coach Wacker's club is down. On to the Yan Yankee Conference now. Rhode Island and Connecticut, 14 to 6. The Roadies have the lead in that ball game. On to Delaware. The Blue Hens hoping to get into the playoffs. 21 to nothing. They lead the Terriers of Boston U. UMass, 14-14 against New Hampshire. That game now in the second quarter. William and Mary, 9 to nothing over the Spiders of Richmond now. And Maine and Villanova, the Wildcats have the lead over the Black Bears, 7 to 3 the score there. On to the Colonial Conference where Lehigh has taken on Lafayette today, 35-30 in a scoring fest there. Uh, there's been scores in the first 10 possessions of that game. Holy Cross in Northeastern, 21 to 6, the Crusaders have the lead, Joe Segretti with a one-yard run. Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights leading Colgate 21-7, that game in the second quarter. And as promised, more Beano Cook, more scores, more highlights. Dick Vitale and John Saunders from the tip-off classic in Springfield, all yet ahead here at halftime. The water coming out of this faucet is hot enough to scald you. But unlike any other faucet, this one has the brains to tell you. The Ceramics Electronics from American Standard. It's the first faucet that takes its own temperature. If that's not a big enough reason to get the Ceramics Electronics, consider this small one.
Thank you, Connecticut. Hi, I'm Larry Merriam, owner of Key Hyundai, here to say thank you for buying over 2,300 new Hyundais. We're sixth in New England. And thanks for telling Hyundai that 98% of you would recommend us to a friend. You know, we've now got Connecticut's leading consumer advocate on our staff, Mike. At Key Hyundai, our everyday low prices and attention to detail are just what you're looking for. If you're looking for a great price on a Hyundai, call me at 1-800-HIGH-BOGEY. I'm Mike Bogoslowski, and I'm in your corner. December, a month-long gift of sports from ESPN. Here are just a few. All this and more in December, only on ESPN. ESPN opens the door on college basketball. Slam jammed with color and excitement. A sparkling tournament weekend tips off Friday as top teams reload for the great Alaska shootout. National powers clash at the Maui Classic. And the championship is at stake in the Dodge Big Apple NIT. The color and excitement of live college basketball and ESPN. The right combination. Quick update on that very meaningful Ivy League championship game. Cornell and Penn are now tied 3-3 in the second quarter of play. On we go now. The game played in Ireland today on ESPN. First ever college football game played in Europe. Let's show you what developed. Oh, the parachuter entering the stadium there. A little rugby field where some football was played. Clearly the best run of the day. Mike Sanders breaking tackle after tackle. 54 yards. Touchdown. Boston College. They led 17-10 at the half. The end of the third quarter we go, 24-17 BC, Ed Toner with a touchdown. And it's 31-17 Boston College, but Army wouldn't quit. Fourth quarter, Mike Mayweather. Watch him find the seam. He could go all the way, but he doesn't. He'll be run out of bounds after a 67-yard return. That set up a cadet touchdown, making it 31-24. Into the fourth quarter, Tim Frazier almost scores here. Cutting to the outside, 16 yards. That led to a BC touchdown, 38-24 the final. Boston College gets the win. The lucky leprechaun isn't just in Notre Dame, is he? 38-24 BC with the victory. On we go now to the MAC Conference, where Central Michigan, the Chippewas, are leading Miami of Ohio in uh, the half, 17-14. Ohio, you and Western Michigan, the Broncos headed to the uh, California Bowl. 3-3 the score there. On to the Southern Conference now. The Citadel against Furman. 7-7 that game now in the second quarter. The Catamounts of Western Carolina. Bob Waters' team right now against VMI. 6-3 the Catamounts have the lead in the first quarter. The Thundering Herd of Marshall looking for their 10th win. 14-0 over Youngstown State. James Madison looking for a winning season with a victory today over Virginia Tech. That game now in the second quarter they lead by 6. And Georgia Southern, Herc Russell's team, 24 to nothing over South Carolina State. That game now in the second quarter. Towson State and Liberty are tied at seven apiece in the second quarter of play. And as we promised to you, we've got a great deal more to tell you about here on our halftime show, where we've got a wild one underway in the Ivy League. Dino and I will be back. Wanted. NFL seeks brilliant coach. Can you outsmart your opponent with a strategy you plan from 20 offensive and 12 defensive play formations? Well, here's your proving ground. With over 200 NFL highlights, play action VCR football from Epics. The Christmas jingle tie from Wembley, now performing in great stores across America. Buzzard's Gulch was drier than the red-hot desert ground. But an hombre named Mackenzie came riding into town. His saddlebags were loaded with the best fruit ever found. And he ambled up to the bar and bought the house around. To beat the desert heat, Spuds moseys on up to Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. Much obliged for the Bud Light, cowboy. <laughs> ESPN is your ticket to the NFL when the Patriots and Dolphins go head-to-head. -head. The Patriots pack the punch on their playoff drive that leaves opponents red, white, black, and blue. The Dolphins' Dan Marino connects with the Marx Brothers, Duper and Clayton, and offense is the secret word. 
the New England Patriots and Miami Dolphins battle head-to-head -head on NFL Sunday Night Football at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. On this showdown Saturday, perhaps the matchup among matchups is in the Pac-10, where the Rose Bowl recipient will be honored today with the winner of the UCLA-USC game. Despite who comes up with this victory, whether it's unbeaten USC or sixth-rated UCLA, Los Angeles, L.A., will still be on a roll. I love Those are just some of the names in the galaxy of stars etched in cement here at Mann's Chinese Theater. Troy Aikman and Rodney Pete, two of Hollywood's newest stars, may one day see their names here. But for this week, they're putting their star status on hold and working on being film critics. As a quarterback, you have to. You have to know uh, what you're trying to do offensively as much as the coaches do. It's important for me to get in there and watch film and and uh, have a good understanding of the defenses and, and what our offensive game plan is. And that's just, uh, that's part of it. Uh, you know, I've always watched a lot of film and, and uh, I'll probably be spending a lot more hours in the film than this one. Ever thought about being a, a film critic? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, <laughs> Siskel and Ebert, I don't, I don't want to be like them. Rodney must review almost like a film critic. Is he a, would you say he's a good film critic? Uh, yeah, I think he is, he's a great film critic. I think that's something that makes him the quarterback that he is. Uh, he understands those defenses uh, instantly, and uh, you know he really helps helps me out in the sense of understanding them better also. So uh, yeah, I think he, he'd make a great film critic. And he has great vision. He sees a lot. He doesn't just feel it. He sees it on the field, and I think it really helps him in terms of uh, finding the open guy. He did just that in the fourth quarter of last year's game, finding his favorite target, Eric Affolter, in the end zone for the very controversial game-winning touchdown. It was the Trojans who proved spoiler for UCLA, and the Bruins would dearly love to turn the tables in front of 100,000 at the Rose Bowl. It's revenge that I've been thinking about ever since we lost. And, you know, the thing about the USC game, it's like losing someone you love. I mean, it, it, it's like when someone you love dies on you. That's, that's how much it hurts when you lose, lose to USC. It's just a tremendous loss. We got to keep that national championship thing in the back of our minds because we got something good here, and we don't want to let it go. You saw UCLA let it go, right? right? If we lose UCLA, there it all goes. Rose Bowl, national, everything that we've worked for. But Troy Aikman would like nothing better than to avenge the disaster which befell him on his 21st birthday in last year's game. Three interceptions are not easy to forget, and neither is the Trojan defense, which may be even better this year. A defense that's given up 90 yards rushing in four games. Uh, not 90 a game, 90 in four games and that just basically doesn't allow you to run the ball and makes you throw the ball to beat him. So who's got the edge? What about Rodney's measles? Can the Trojans overcome? Or will the Bruins make it six of nine against USC in the 80s? You can't predict it. You can wish, you can hope, and I do wish that UCLA will win it. Uh, but I recognize that it could go either way. Bruins all the way. <laughs> I'm waiting for that one. It's going to be a tough game. It's uh, the Trojans all the way. Absolutely. Measles or no measles, there is nothing stopping this team. They're going all the way to the top. All right, Chris. I really believe Aikman's got the advantage. I look for him to have a big day. Well, if Aikman has a big day, he has a shot at the Heisman Trophy. If Rodney Pete has a great day this week and also next week, he has a great shot. But I still think... Barry Sanders mm -hmm. will win it. By the way, Barry Sanders has about 30 yards rushing in his game with Iowa State right now. We'll be monitoring that game throughout the day. Could it be, Bino, could it be that on showdown oh, Saturday no. in college football, there's really room for Dick Vitale? Vitale, does that mean the anti-freeze is far behind? <laughs> the winner is here. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. That's right, and John Saunders is standing by with him. My, my condolences to John. All right, let's go out to John. The tip-off classic number one preseason Duke <laughs> against Kentucky. John, Dick.
Okay, Tim, I'll tell you, the season's just barely underway, and already you're getting your shots in at my buddy here, Dick Vitale. It's his 10th season of doing college basketball on ESPN. We're going to have Kentucky and Duke, and we have to talk about the Kentucky allegations, but we'll do that in the opening of the show because we want to talk about what happens on the floor, Dick. Well, we're going to have Duke here. That's excitement, dear number one. Unbelievable in that maybe they could be a little bit overrated to be a number one team, but at least we're going to see the team preseason. Remember, last year, number one was here, Syracuse, and they got beat by North Carolina without J.R. Reed. And Bino, just because you picked West Virginia, don't get cocky. And Timmy Brando, you're still ugly as far as I'm concerned. I'm the best looking guy at ESPN. And I gotta work with them, guys. Shots back and forth. Let's go back to football and Tim Brando. Still working on my hair, Dick, just like you. All right, we've got a lot more yet ahead. Of course, we have the game to get back to with Sean McDonough and Jack Corrigan. We'll get to all of that when we come back. Class presents The Collection, museum-quality decorator's hardware with dazzling elegance and fine craftsmanship. Works of art for your home, brought to you exclusively by Class, where you can choose from international hardware from every corner of the world. You have to come in and see this magnificent display for yourself at Class, worth a trip from anywhere. Volvo knows about building cars other companies would like to know. The expertise to develop such advances as an ingenious multi-link independent rear suspension and to incorporate a remarkable anti-lock braking system. And now Volvo's most coveted secrets are for sale. They can be found in the 760. Saturday Stampede. Unstoppable power unleashed every week. A thundering herd of the country's best college football teams colliding throughout the day live. See Major Harris and the West Virginia Mountaineers take on Syracuse. Then the Miami Hurricanes try to blow past LSU. Two great games live Saturday starting at 6 Eastern only on ESPN. It is an outstanding day, isn't it? Showdown Saturday on ESPN. Let's update you now quickly on some games underway. Michigan, Ohio State, the Buckeyes just scored. It is now 20 to 7 early in the third quarter. A lot yet to be heard in that ball game. And Terry Allen just scored for the Clemson Tigers. It is now 16 to nothing. Danny Forge Club has the lead over the man in black and his Gamecocks. Of course, Clemson is headed to the Citrus Bowl. South Carolina already going to the Liberty Bowl. And we've got Syracuse and West Virginia, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Denny Schreiner standing by with Stan White, and that will be followed at 9 o'clock when Bob Carpenter, Kevin Kiley, and Chris Fowler bring you the 11th-ranked Bayou Bengals against the third-ranked Hurricanes of Miami. Clearly, the best college football doubleheader of the night, and perhaps one we'll not soon forget here on ESPN. All right, we'll be by between games. We get you ready for the tip-off classic after this game, the game. Let's get back out to Sean McDonough and Jack Corrigan in Cambridge. Tim, thank you. Although I'm not sure I'd like to crack about Dick Vitale's hairline. I'm a little sensitive <laughs> on that subject myself. 1917 is the score. Yale with the lead as we look toward the second half. And both teams will be pressed to match the excitement of the first half. And the fans, 40,000 plus, a sellout certainly got their money's worth in the first half alone wide open football not the case but close to the best game up at Ithaca 3-3 the score at the half in the Ivy League title game Penn scored first on a 30-yard field goal by Rich Friedenberg but just before the end of the half Andy Bednar connected from 48 yards out and they're tied at three with 30 minutes to play at Sholkoff Field will be interesting to see how these teams start this second half of action Sean because as you said Lots of things happened in the first half. It was because Yale got off to the quick lead and then Harvard came back. If they sustain that kind of emotion here for the final 30 minutes, we're going to have easily our best football game of the season. And the fans who have jammed Harvard Stadium here are going to see another classic chapter in one of the great stories of college football. Carmcosa with the lead, but with the worried expression as well, the way this football game is going. Neither coach can feel particularly comfortable at the moment. 1917, 
Yale with the lead, and they'll kick off. Todd Collin, the senior from Benton, Michigan, graduated third in his high school class of 265 at Heartland High, and is kick fielded by Haller at the 12. David Haller. Big hole, David Haller, tackled by the kicker, Cowan, at the 41-yard line. Haller has been outstanding on kickoff returns. That one, a 29-yard return. Well, the first half stats show you just what you would expect in a 19-17 ball game. Yale with just a little bit of an advantage in total offense and the big turnover, the block punt that Yale turned into a touchdown against Harvard, looming as a key factor in this game. But... The way Tom Yoey and Harvard moved after the early 13 to nothing deficit, they're going to put more points on the board. Yoey, 50% in the first half. One back in the backfield. It's Alex Konovalchik. Hines came around to take the handoff, and he has good yardage on first down. Out to the 48-yard line for a gain of seven for Tony Hines, who had a big first half. 83 yards for Hines on a seven yard touchdown run. The first Harvard touchdown scored by Hines at the time that cut the yield lead to 13 to 10. Second down three, just underway, third quarter. Again, Konovalchik, the lone setback. Yoey complete to Phillips. First down, he got away momentarily from Hoff, who shirt tackled him. With help from Don Lund and John Hansberry, first down Harvard at the Yale 47. And if you are just joining us, Tom Yoey, the Harvard quarterback, has a stress fracture on a non-weight-bearing bone in his left leg. He has played well. The only compensation Harvard has really put into their offense is the quick drop and the short passes for Yoey. They have not wanted him to set up and throw deep too often. You see the protection on that left leg. Again, Hines coming around. And he's thrown for loss by Mike Berry. Flagged down in the area in which you would expect holding. And that's what it is. On the offense. Go on. Harvard had only the one penalty in the first half. That has been a problem for this offense this season. In addition to the number of turnovers they have had this year, they have also had many, many times the crucial penalty to negate drives or long plays. Holding during the run, still first. And now instead of second and nine, it's first and 20. Back at the Harvard 44 yard line. 13.40 to play, third quarter. Yale with a 19-17 lead in a back and forth first half. Yale jumped out 13 to nothing. Harvard came back to take a 17-13 lead, but Yale scored just before the end of the half to take the lead back. Long pass, and it is nearly intercepted. Don Lund and Chris Rutan had excellent coverage on Gajewski downfield, and Lund nearly had the pickoff. Don Lund, the captain of Yale, his brother Ken was a captain, the first brother combination to captain the Bulldog football team, and he made a great drop from his linebacking spot and nearly came up with it. The history major out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He had a great game in a losing effort against Harvard last year. He's having another pretty good football game this afternoon. Second down 20 for Harvard. The delay to Hines. Hines back across midfield. And he drives forward to the Yale 47-yard line. Gain of nine for Tony Hines. Don Lund, again, made the tackle. He's out of Upper St. Clair High School, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Interesting play call here now for Harvard on third and nine, or actually at an hour they spotted apparently his knee had touched down, so it'll be third and 11. And Joe Rustig has used a lot of his double wing setup this afternoon, Sean, and he is going to go with the one-back setup again. The one-back is Konovalchik. Short drop, and now a longer drop by Yoey. He got away from D'Onofrio. Yoey going deep down the field. Phillips dropped the ball at the goal line. He was behind Rich Huff. The ball was on target, and Phillips couldn't hang on. Neil Phillips thought that Rich Huff was going to touch this ball. And he just doesn't pick it up. He is behind him. 
and pulled his head off it. Boy, that was a tough play. How about the arm of Tom Yowie on the run, throwing off one foot, going to his left. He threw the ball 50 yards. High snap. Hall got the kick off. Reggie Sellers lets it bounce. It takes a good roll for Harvard and goes out at the 10-yard line. Yale with a 19-17 lead. 12.25 to play in the third quarter. How can you not fall in love with something that looks so good? My Celica still gets my blood pumping. The 1989 Toyota Celica GTS. Looks to seduce you. Powerful 135 horsepower engine to thrill you. No matter what you do for a living. First, Gillette made shaving closer, then we made it smoother. With Atra Plus, its Luber Smooth Strip glides the razor over your face for Gillette's smoothest shave. The Atra Plus system, first we made it closer, then we made it smoother. Wanted, NFL seeks brilliant coach. Can you outsmart your opponent with a strategy you plan from 20 offensive and 12 defensive play formations? Well, here's your proving ground. With over 200 NFL highlights, play action VCR football from Epics. Casio watches that do more than keep time. They keep you ahead of your time. Today's game is being brought to you by Toyota and the 4x4 trucks that give you power, performance, and style. By Almaden Wines. Every glass is sheer pleasure, pure enjoyment. And by Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Sean McDonough and Jack Corrigan back at a sold-out Harvard Stadium. Joe Restick and Tom Yoey talked it over. And it's Darren Keeler back in at quarterback for Yale. First and 10 from the Bulldog 10-yard line. Yale with a two-point lead in the early moments of quarter three. Kevin Callahan bulls forward for four yards out to the 14. Callahan scored two touchdowns in the first half for Yale on a one-yard touchdown run and the final score of the half on a 12-yard screen pass from Mark Brubaker, who moved the Yale offense right down the field, but he's back on the bench. I think deep in their own territory, they want to be a little bit more conservative. They'll go back to the option attack. That's why Keeler's in the ball game. Both Keeler and Brubaker have been seeing action at quarterback in recent weeks. Good run by Bryce. He went leaping over one potential ball carrier and got out near the 20 and very close to a first down. A couple of the wrinkles that get put in for this kind of football game. Yale effective with that wishbone. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering from the perspective of Carm Koza, he's over at that sideline saying, well, maybe I want to make this a more regular part of my offense in the 1989 season. Third and less than a yard. Again, the wishbone and Yale move. Bryce was in motion. That'll back them up instead of third and... Less than a yard, it's going to be third and a little bit more than five yards. 81 on the offense, encroachment, dead ball foul. Third time this afternoon that Yale has lost a first down. Twice they had gotten the first down and penalties brought it back. You would expect that they would have picked it up there on third and short, and now it changes things. Both Griffin and Bryce were moving before the snap. The official mentioned... Griffin, I didn't think they were supposed to give the number in college football. On, 11 minutes to play third quarter. Yale 19, Harvard 17. They stay on the ground. Zachary didn't get there. Needed to reach the 20. He's down at the 18-yard line. And Yale will have to punt from deep in its own territory with a two-point lead. Once again, here's Tim Brando. All right, Sean, now to Notre Dame we go. The number one fighting Irish and Tony Rice looking long to find 
Raheem Ishmael, who had made that great block on that Mark Green touchdown a few moments ago. Well, he does it again. This time on the receiving end, it's now 21-3. The Fighting Irish rolling along in South Bend. By the way, Clemson now leading South Carolina 16-7, Sean. Tim, here it's Todd Cowan in the punt for Yale. High kick. Fair catch called for by Molinari, and he makes it at his own 47-yard line. Harvard back on offense after a 35-yard punt by Todd Cowan. Yale 19 and Harvard 17. Meet your next truck. The truck for 89. The all-new Toyota V6 4x4 SR5. The most advanced V6 engine in its class. All-new on-the-move four-wheel demand. And a brand-new look that says Toyota quality. It's everything I ever wanted. Toyota, who could ask for anything more? Alma Den Wine. Every glass is sheer pleasure, pure enjoyment, and that's all a great wine was ever meant to be. Almaden, for the sheer pleasure of it. We are gathered here today... You'd expect this Panasonic Omnimovie camcorder to shoot in daylight. If anyone believes this couple should not be married, let him speak now. You might expect this Panasonic camcorder to shoot in room light. Let him speak now. But what you don't expect is that it can shoot by the light of one candle. And it's VHS. Let him speak now. Camcorders that do the unexpected make Panasonic just slightly ahead of our time. Among those around the world with a serious interest in the outcome of this game, the incoming commissioner of Major League Baseball and the former president of Yale University, A. Bartlett Giamatti, class of 1960. and Gerald Ford, although the Harvard band made it a point at halftime to point out that Harvard has produced six presidents while Yale has produced only two. In attendance here this afternoon, one-time Congressman Hamilton Fish, who will be 100 years old in December. He is a Harvard graduate and the oldest living football All-American. Class of 1910, he was introduced to the crowd here moments ago. It was a 15-yard personal foul penalty against Harvard on the punt, so they are back to the 32-yard line. And on first down, Hines gained four, running right, and he went out of bounds at the 36. There is Hamilton Fish, class of 1910, and as Jack mentioned, the oldest living All-American. So the best tackle of his time by Walter Camp, who was the coach at the time in college football. The first All-American teams were the result of Walter Camp and the great Grantland Rice. As a result of the penalty, it was first and 25, so it is now second down and 21. From the 36, Yoey dumps it off, wide open Jim Reedy. He's tackled by Brian Hannon and John Reese at the 45-yard line. Gain of nine, still well short of the first down. They have 12 yards to go, does Harvard. And Yoey is limping off. He's playing with a stress fracture in his lower left leg. And there's also a flag down on the play. Tim Perry, number six, is the backup quarterback today. He's a junior from nearby Andover, Massachusetts. You raised the issue earlier. The Harvard coaches didn't know how long Yoey would be able to go. Thus far, he's performed very admirably. But he has limped off, and Tim Perry is getting ready to come in. And they're still sorting out the penalty, which is going to back Harvard up to the 26-yard line. Let's see if we can see. We're going to replay the previous play for you. Tom rolling to Holy his left. And because of that, he's going to have to throw Joe off second. that left leg. Releases the football there for, and now he goes down. That was simply a matter of the pain was too much right there. Remarkable he has played as long as he has played in this game. Tim Perry in at quarterback. It was a holding penalty against Harvard. Hines got the call and got five out to the 31. 
9.30 to play in the third quarter. And Tim Perry is on with Harvard trailing Yale 19 to 17. Perry was the starting quarterback last week against Penn. He went 11 for 28 for 100 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. And he's also a rushing threat. He rushed for 65 yards last week against the Quakers. He's played quarterback, halfback, and split end for the Crimson this season. A whole lot you can do on third and 27. Give it to Hines and take your best shot. And Hines got back to the 48-yard line, but 10 yards short of a first down. He picked up 17 on that run, but didn't get the 27 Harvard needed for a first down. So the Crimson will kick it away with less than nine minutes to play in the third quarter, and Yale leading by two. Down on the near sideline, Joe Restig and Tom Yoey. I can tell from Yoey's reaction, he wants to go back in. He was telling, telling Coach Restig, hey, I, I can do it, I can do it. Paul, under pressure, got it off. Yeah, Buddy Zachary, their leading rusher, rushing the punt that time, and he almost got it. Reggie Sellers down after two-yard punt return, and Yale starts up at the 14-yard line. Once again, here's Tim Brando. Sean, showdown Saturday continues, and the Buckeyes are making a game of it now against the Wolverines. There's Bill Madlock, nine-yard touchdown run, and right now, Ohio State down by just six. I told you at halftime, a long time yet to be played in that traditional classic. Let's go back to Sean and Jack. He told us, and when Tim speaks, we listen. That's right. All season long, it's been a pleasure to work with Tim. This is the final Ivy League telecast of the season here on ESPN. Zachary, who nearly blocked the punt moments ago, Brought the call on first down and got a yard, perhaps a little bit more, across the 15-yard line. Field position, an obvious factor right now for Yale. They began the second half deep in their own territory. Blew a first down opportunity because of the penalty, and they're backed up again. Kentucky and Duke following Ivy League football in the Hall of Fame tip-off classic. John Saunders and Dick Vitale standing by in Springfield, Massachusetts. Zachary again didn't get much perhaps two more out to the 17 yard line Zachary has had trouble rushing the last couple of weeks because Yale has become so dependent on the run defenses are looking for it and he hasn't been able to get loose as he was for four straight weeks when he had four straight games of 100 yards or more Harvard winning the battle statistically except the one that counts on the scoreboard and Yale with the Final second touchdown, final seconds touchdown of the first half with a two-point lead. Yoey is still standing next to Joe Restick on the near sideline, and I think if Harvard gets the ball back right here, he'll be back in the game. Keeler rolling out, being pursued, and he's spilled at the 15. Greg Gasevitz, the backup nose guard, number 68, made the play for Harvard. He's a senior from Getzville, New York, and his brother Richard was a tight end on Michigan State's Rose Bowl team last year. He's a chemistry and physics major here at Harvard. And the Harvard defense, which had problems in the opening drive and in the closing drive of the first half, has been very effective here in the third quarter. Todd Cowan to punt. Ten men up for Harvard. They couldn't get to the punter. Molinari singles for a fair catch, and he makes it at the 45-yard line. Just a 29-yard punt. 6.26 to play, third quarter. <laughs> A lesson in Chevy Nomics. Good things come in Chevy packages. One package on a Cavalier gives you power steering, auxiliary lighting, and a heavy duty battery for only $3. You save $300 before you even make a deal. Sounds good to me. And for a limited time only, you can get an automatic transmission worth $415 free from your Chevy dealer. Chevy Nomics. It adds up to more for less from your Fairfield County Chevy dealers. That's some package. And now the Arctic Sport Network presents the A-Team. Arctic Sports offering top-of-the-line sporting equipment for 42 years. Along with an experienced staff dedicated to sports. The A-Team has made Arctic Sport Connecticut's number one team dealer. And service to you, the customer, is Arctic Sports priority. Arctic Sports has been a family-owned business for over 42 years. Cash the A-Team spirit! 
introducing a sedan with the heart of a lion. The all-new Toyota Cressida. Inside, the majestic body beats a powerful 24-valve, 190-horsepower engine. Plus, legendary Toyota quality. Quality that has made Cressida the most trouble-free new car sold two years in a row. Cressida for 89, the king of luxury performance sedans and the pride of Toyota. Sean McDonough and Jack Corrigan, along with our great Ivy League football telecasting crew, here at Harvard Stadium, 1917, Yale with the lead, but Harvard with the ball first and 10 at the 45 with Yale. And on first down, it's a three-yard gain for Jim Reedy and the Crimson. 6.15 and the clock running to be played in the third quarter. No scoring thus far here in the second half. Jim Reedy has one of the Harvard touchdowns. And the gutty performance, the gutty story of Tom Yoey continues. You see the statistical note there. Harvard has had a great year on offense, except when it comes to winning because of all the turnovers. Yoey back in there. Perry came on for a couple of plays. Yoey dumps it off. Konovalchuk with it. And out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. He has a first down. Alex Konovalchuk with the catch. He's playing in his final game here at Harvard. He's a senior from Peabody, Massachusetts. He's also the captain of the Harvard wrestling team. He wrestles at 190 pounds, and he toured Japan with a bunch of New England wrestlers this past spring. Another interesting, as you see, another important graphic for Harvard and the great year that Tom Yoey has had throwing the football. One other compensation they have made for that broken leg, they are rolling him to his left so that he won't take a blow on that bad leg. If he throws to his right, he would be more apt to do so. That time he did move to his right a bit, throws back across the field. Gajewski was surrounded by four Bulldogs, and it was thrown away by Yoey. Harvard trying to regain the lead here, and they've come out throwing on this possession. They have enjoyed the field position advantage, Sean. Harvard has had Yale backed up on both times that the Bulldogs have had the ball, and Carm Coase has been very conservative offensively, while Joe Rustic has tried to do some things on this drive. Hines couldn't get anywhere. They've run that play several times now, and Yale was starting to get the hang of it. That time, Hines ran into Glover Lawrence, the left tackle number 73. I know Yale has had poor field position in this half, Jack, but Brubaker moved the team very crisply when he was in there at the end of the first half, but yet we haven't seen him in the third quarter. That will be a, a real key factor, I think, next time Yale has the football. We've got to see if that's the way Carm Koza wants to go. He feels they have greater ability to do more things with Keeler as the quarterback, but you're right. I mean, in that final drive of the first half, Brubaker did it all. Yeah. I don't know how he could feel that they have the ability to do more things when they can't throw the ball at all when Keeler is in there. That pass batted down. Intended for Hines and John Reese, who's had a terrific game for Yale, knocked it away. John Reese is an outstanding lacrosse player. In fact, he was an honorable mention All-American for the Yale lacrosse team. And shows you he's a pretty good football player, too. The junior out of West Babylon, New York, has made over 130 tackles this year and even in the Ivy League 5'11 and 190 is small for an inside linebacker Hall is going to try his longest field goal of the year a 48 yarder and it won't get there he popped it up well short and wide to the right as well Hall has connected from 47 yards this year but he got under that one and Harvard still trails it's Yale 19 and Harvard 17 442 to play and now, Sean, they have the field position because the ball goes back to the line of scrimmage on a field goal try beyond the 20. For the moment, Carm Coase is still going to go with Darren Keeler at quarterback. Penn has taken a 6-3 to three lead over Cornell in their field goal battle at Ithaca in the third quarter. Rich Friedenberg, a 38-yard field goal. Penn 6, Cornell 3 in the battle for the Ivy League title. Bryce on first down. Tripped up after a short gain. He got out to the 34. Peter Allen tripped him up for Harvard. This time it is good field position, as you point out. 
And in the 105th renewal of the game, Darren Keeler still at quarterback and Mark Brubaker on the bench, apparently with the lead. They'll stay on the ground and chew up some time, but still more than 19 minutes to play here in Cambridge. Bryce again. Ahead for a couple more. Out near the 38-yard line, Yale will be facing third down and four. We talk about the tradition of this game, the significance of the game, particularly significant for the seniors on each team because Harvard has won the last two years. So this is the final opportunity for those seniors for the Yale Bulldogs to gain some measure of revenge. And they're going to remember that final game most of all. If they can win that one, it's going to mean just that much more to them. Third down four. The option, Keeler has the first down and more. He's out to the 50-yard line. Lost the football, but it was after he hit the ground. Darren Keeler with a 12-yard gain, and Yale keeps the football first and 10 at midfield. Tell you what, if he doesn't lose his balance here, he's going to gain a lot more than out to midfield. The little guy hides among all the big boys, and he had more running room. He was trying to get behind the block of Kevin Callahan and lost his footing. But Yale is now out to midfield and looking to try and put some distance between themselves and the Crimson. Wishbone again. Bryce again, and he's hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Greg Hubert dropped Bryce right at the line. Once again, let's check in with Tim Brando. Sean, here's your Heisman update on Barry Sanders today in Ames, Iowa, taking aim on Marcus Allen's single-season rushing record. That's a four-yard touchdown run, 13 carries, 77 yards. They lead Iowa State 14-10. And the late word from Pasadena is Rodney Pete is dressed and apparently ready after recovering from about with the measles for his showdown against UCLA. Two and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Keeler on the run, heading to the sideline. He went out of bounds in Harvard territory at the 43-yard line, about two yards short of a first down. You guys get a lot of things wrong with them, but who could believe that in the biggest game of the year for Southern Cal and UCLA, you'd be wondering whether or not your starting quarterback was recovered from the measles enough to play. This might be a great game, but not everybody is glued to the edge of their seat. Sellout crowd of 40,000 on hand. Yale with a two-point lead in the final minutes of quarter number three. Third and two. Harvard shows blitz. Then they drop back. The pitch to Bryce. He has the first down. And he's tackled at the 34-yard line. This play works because of an excellent block by the wingback, Mike Hosang, number 22. Watch him right there. He is latched into Bobby Frame right there. He's got to maintain contact with him. Keep in mind that in college football now, like the pros, you can fully extend your arms as long as you keep them within your body frame. He kept them within his frame, on frame, and Yale gets the first down. And Darren Keeler marching the Bulldogs again. Exclusively on the ground. Zachary with lead blockers. Breaks a tackle. One man to beat Jimmy Smith. He got tied up with Smith enough so that Gasevich could come back and make the tackle. If he had been able to go right around Jim Smith, it was off to the races for Zachary. Nonetheless, a 20-yard gain, and Yale is in great shape down at the Harvard 13-yard line. This is what Buddy Zachary adds to the Yale offense. He has the ability to shed tacklers and then has the great outside quickness. Well, you get a little shake and bake to Jimmy Smith there. He just ran out of room on the side. Did I say it was a bad idea to leave this quarterback in the game? <laughs> they should put the other quarterback back in? I didn't mean it. That's why we're up here in Carmsburg right. down there for 25 Carms years. won enough games. He doesn't need That's our right. help. Zachary again. Nice cut. And he's out of bounds at the five. A gain of eight. And along the near sideline, Tim Perry is warming up again. And perhaps... Tom Yowie will be coming out of the ball game again. He has his helmet off, does Yowie, and he's still standing in the vicinity of Joe Restick. But it might be Tim Perry when Harvard gets the ball back, and the Harvard deficit might be larger by the time they get it back again. 137 to play third quarter, a two-point Yale lead. They're threatening to score again. Bryce 
leaps ahead and appears to have the first down at the three. It depends upon where they spot the football. Kevin Bryce, the senior from Chicago, Illinois, had part of his shoulder blade removed during the summer and came back and bench pressed 35 pounds more than he ever had before. This has been a very impressive drive by Yale. It is now first and goal. They'll get four cracks not only to widen their lead to him, but also to run more time off the clock. A minute 20 to play in the third quarter. Wishbone again for Yale. Zachary trying to get outside. Zachary stopped, lunges forward, and got down near the goal line. He was met by Chris Resendiz, the sophomore from Fall River, Massachusetts, who hasn't seen much action of late, but he made a big play defensively there for the Crimson. Resendiz in for the injured Jimmy Smith. Well, he squares up and makes a good hit on Buddy Zachary, but here's what I talked about, the power of Buddy Zachary. That looked like he was going to be stopped at about the four-yard line. Instead, he puts it within a half a length of the football into the end zone. Second and goal. Just outside the goal line. Callahan tried to go up and over, and he was hit by Hubert, and he was stopped short of the goal line. Don Peterson also fired up number 99, the Harvard captain, and Hubert knew that was coming, and he met Callahan head on. Coming right at you, Callahan has gone airborne twice for Harvard, for Yale touchdowns, and this time Harvard's Greg Hubert answered it, going higher than Callahan and whacking him down. They're going to run an option here, Sean. You can tell Hubert is ready, and his defense is as well. He was screaming the defensive assignments, the defensive calls to his teammates. That's the end of the quarter. No scoring in the third quarter after a wide open first half of play. It's the game from Harvard Stadium in Cambridge. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this on ESPN. The new walking shoe. Now you've got the right shoes for the just for you. Easy spirit. It's easy when you got the right shoe. Easy walking. Now you can walk for miles and your feet won't feel a thing. Easy Spirit. Call now. Announcing the Holiday Inn Make the Super Call game. Come to Holiday Inn, get a game card. Now, Super Bowl 18. Four minutes to go. Raider space, a fourth and goal. You call. Scratch off the right play and you win. Thousands of prizes. Even a trip to the Super Bowl. Getting into it. Only at America's favorite hotel. For reservations, make the super call. In the village of Upper Nyack, the firemen fight fires with ladders and hoses. And a Murata fax machine. It's used to receive floor plans and detailed drawings of buildings so they can plan how to attack the fire before they get to the fire. Murata Fax Machines. My man makes a living thinking on his feet, so he can't get in a bind when he's covering his beat. He wears Hanes, 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 if it's right everywhere. Hanes, 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 it's not just on your way. Nothing makes a man feel better than the superior fit and comfort of Hanes. It's not just underwear. He wears Hanes, Hanes, Hanes. It's not just underwear. It's Hanes. December, a month-long gift of sports from ESPN. Here are just a few. All this and more in December, only on ESPN. There's a lot of tradition in the Harvard-Yale game. Part of it right there, the Saybrook College men from Yale University with the Saybrook strip at the end of the third period. Much more important the situation. Third and goal for Yale, just outside the goal line. Keeler, touchdown! Darren Keeler on 
the quarterback sneak gives Yale a 25 to 17 lead. Junior Mike Ciotti, the center, buries the nose man. Keeler stepped back and went right behind his all Ivy guard, senior Jeff Rudolph. And the Eli's with a chance with an extra point to open up a nine point lead. Scott Walton pushes it through, and it is a nine point lead. So Harvard will need two scores to come back and take the lead in this football game. Just a good job on the line of scrimmage by the right side of the Yale offense, Mike Ciotti and Jeff Rudolph, to deny the Harvard defense any penetration. And the little guy, Darren Keeler, went up and over. Yale with the advantage here, trying to end the season on a good note. Let's go back to game day. And Tim Brando. Jack, thanks very much. And Ohio State continuing on the comeback trail. Remember, nothing really at stake for Michigan in the Rose Bowl picture, but there's the touchdown. Bobby Olive on the receiving end from Greg Fry. John Cooper has his hand raised in exultation because they just recovered a fumble. So the Buckeyes now have a chance to even add to their one-point lead. Back to Sean and Jack. Well, the season began on a very positive note for John Cooper. The and it might end on Syracuse, one. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only time Syracuse has met defeat thus far. Cooper's been under a little bit of heat back in Ohio. That would certainly help his case if he could beat Michigan. And it's been a disappointing season for both of these two veteran coaches. And what an even rivalry they have had. Joe Restick in his career, 8 and 9 against Yale. Carm Koza as the head coach at Yale, 11, 11 and 1 against Harvard. And it's been an evenly played game here this afternoon. Yale back on top by nine for the full quarter to play. David Haller. Out to the 28-yard line. Joe Jackson made the tackle on special teams for the Bulldogs. And it is Tim Perry back in at quarterback. So apparently Tom Yoey cannot continue. Perry was in for a couple of plays. Earlier in the third quarter for Harvard. He was the heir apparent to the job with the two senior quarterbacks, but I don't think Joe Ristic wanted them to be playing in his junior year. They go to the ground. Reedy tried to get outside. And he got four yards out to the 32. 11 plays, 68 yards. They took four minutes and 44 seconds off the clock, and Darren Keeler finished it. From one yard out. So we go back early in the third quarter. A scrambling Tom Yo. He throws the ball 50 yards downfield. Neil Phillips is open in the end zone. Can't hang on to the football. What a difference that might mean to this game. If I was coaching this team, I'd try and get the ball back in Phillips' hands to get him back involved in the game. They give it to Hines. He breaks through into the secondary. Very close to a first down out of the 38-yard line. It is a first down for Harvard. Fourteen minutes and three seconds remaining in the game. Yale leads 26-17. The option. Perry is a good runner. He's into the secondary. Perry looking to break free. And he's out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Yale. Chris Rutan was the last man to make the play for the Yale defense. This is one of the things that Harvard likes about Tim Perry. Of all the quarterbacks, he is the best runner of the three. Watch when he turns his shoulders upfield. He is saying, right now, I'm heading for it. Got a good block upfield by Konovalchik. Rutan just had the angle, otherwise Perry was gone. Perry had a 43-yard kickoff return in the game against Yale last year. It's also the all-time leading score in Andover High School basketball history. That time he gave it to Hines. Hines was dropped for a one-yard loss. John Hansberry, Don Lund, Mike Berry. Seems like on every play, the Yale linebackers are around the football. They're the guys that make all the tackles. That's the way that Yale defense is set up under defensive coordinator Dave Kelly. The guys up front take all the abuse, and the linebackers make all the tackles. Second down, 11, and the Yale 40. Again on the ground, Hines dropped by D'Onofrio. 
after a gain of five to the 36 yard line. Inside the 36. All right, Mr. McDonough, third down, long yardage. You start thinking about two, two plays, getting it? Mm -hmm. I think so. This is not field goal range for Allen Hall. And particularly with the younger quarterback, you don't want to throw too deep up the field. You're going to try and get this first down in two plays. A pitch to Reedy. He's in trouble. Hennon wrapped him up and dropped him. Mike Barry came in and forced the play wide. And Brian Hennon came up and finished off Jim Reedy. And Harvard is going to have to punt from the Yale 40 with 12.25 to play. A number of times this afternoon, the Yale defense has gambled on a third down play, stunning Mike Berry. And you see, he disrupts the whole play right there, and Brian Hennon finishes it off. If we had a defensive MVP, there'd be little doubt who would get the award this afternoon. Mike Berry has been sensational. Allen Hall, a good kick. Sellers lets it go, and it bounces into the end zone. So a 40-yard punt, but a net of only 20 yards. Yale takes over. They have a nine-point lead with 11.58 to play here at Harvard Stadium. Strange how many automobiles portrayed as state-of-the-art have become mere illusions of innovation. Enter the Acura Legend Coupe, named one of the 10 best cars in the world by both Car and Driver and Road and Track magazines. It is shattering preconceived ideas of what a performance automobile should be. The Legend Coupe, precision crafted performance from Acura. A special report, a one-on-one -on -one discussion with one of Payne Weber's top executives. What about CDs in today's market? Are they a good idea? We're talking with Joe Grano, president of retail sales and marketing at Payne Weber. Joe. We believe that in today's market, CDs are a very appropriate investment, and so much so that we're offering an exciting rebate program. Tell me how this rebate works. Well, if a client purchases a three-month CD through Payne Weber, we not only will provide the competitive yield, we also are going to take the profits that we make as a firm and give it back to the customer. Well, if Payne Weber's not making a profit on these, why are you doing it? We're doing it because, one, it's in the customer's best interest. Secondly, we are encouraging our customers to sit down with us and understand that even savings are an investment, and all CDs are not created equal. And are these CDs insured? All CDs are insured, yes. How can the investor get more details? By simply calling a Payne Weber investment executive. Thank you, Joe. And goodbye for now from Payne Weber. Today's game is being brought to you by Acura, Legend, and Integra. Precision crafted performance exclusively at your Acura dealer by the Remington Electroblade Razor, the vibrating blade system. And by Epix Play Action VCR Football, the football game that lets you coach the pros. Harm Koza watching Darren Keeler direct his offense. The last Yale possession led to a big touchdown in this football game. It opened the Yale lead back to nine points, and they have the ball back. At their own 20, Zachary ahead for almost five. He was stopped just shy of the 25-yard line. 11.50 to play, 26 to 17. Yale with the lead, and a disappointing afternoon for Jim Smith, the outstanding free safety for Harvard, who left the game on Yale's last drive with an injury. It seemed like a shoulder injury when he went off, and oh, it might be a, some sort of a concussion the way he's sitting there. Chris Resendiz is in the ball game. Took a pretty good pop from Buddy Zachary on a play. He looked just dazed more than anything else. Apparently not particularly serious with him still sitting on the bench. Callahan out just short of a first down to the 29-yard line. And this is the time for the Harvard defense. They've got to step forward right now. Third and short yardage. They cannot allow Yale to move down the field like they have done on two other occasions in this football game. The clock is their enemy now. 11 minutes to play. They've got to get the ball back now. And they have to go with a quarterback who is not as adept at throwing the football, so it will take them longer to get back into the game. Harvard with the blitz. Bryce picks up the first down. Rick McIntyre made the tackle, but not before Bryce got out to the 33 for a big Yale first down. They'll get at least three more plays, and they take time off the clock. 10.46 to play. Seb Laspina, the offensive coordinator, sending in the play. I bet it's a run. 
<laughs> I think you're right. Speaking of runners. Speaking of running is right. That's for the New England Patriots game plan of late. John Stevens left and John Stevens right. And you'll see the Patriots outstanding rookie tomorrow night on ESPN Sunday Night Football as they take on the Miami Dolphins at Joe Robbie Stadium. Reggie Sellers into the game. And ahead for two to the 35-yard line. Sellers, reserve halfback. Out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, he's a junior at Yale. Has his eyes on a law career when he's finished in New Haven. He's an economics, political science, and Spanish major at Yale. Keeping himself busy. Mm -hmm. So they stopped him pretty well on first. Day. Here's another. They, they've got to force Yale into a long yardage situation on third down. Just less than 10 minutes to play now. Yale with a nine-point lead. Zachary ducks under and gets out to the 38 for a gain of three. And it'll be third and five upcoming for the Bulldogs. They have the ball on the right hash. You've got to expect them to run some kind of option action with Keeler and Zachary to the left side. Harvard would anticipate that. So let's see if the Yale coaching staff goes according to norm or if they're going to try and come up with something surprising here. But they want to maintain possession here. Harvard's got to get the ball back. Tight end Plunkett shifts. On third and five, a big play in the game right here. Keeler kept it. He's in trouble, and he is stopped short of a first down at the 40-yard line. Did well to get away from the original Harvard defenders, and he ducked forward for about two. Don Peterson, the captain, number 99, gets off the bottom of the pile for Harvard. So one first down, and then out for Yale, and Cowan is on to punt. Less than nine minutes to play now. 8.45 remaining fourth quarter. And here they come. Ten men up for Harvard. And flag down. Resendiz looked like he was offside. And if that's the call, Yale will keep the drive alive. It looked like Chris Resendiz, the sophomore, lined up at the end of the Harvard line along the near side of the field, beat the snap across the line of scrimmage. And on fourth and three, if it's a five-yard penalty against the Crimson, Yale will keep the ball. Offside on the defense. Going that's to be a what it was. Down. Another crucial, crucial mistake by Harvard. This has killed them all year. Turnovers and penalties. The penalty there keeps the drive alive. Yale with an opportunity now to run more time off the clock. And we have an update from Ithaca, the Penn Cornell game. It is at the end of the third quarter now, and Penn continues to lead Cornell 6-3 in the Ivy League title game at Sholkoff Field in Ithaca, New York. Biggest penalty of the day, a second to go from Chris Resendiz of Harvard. First and 10 at the Yale 45. Bryce got five, and that was due to the work of the Yale line. The Harvard defensive line was driven back three yards off the line of scrimmage, running right behind their standout guard, Jeff Rudolph, and their 310-pound tackle, Art Coleman. Jeff Rudolph, number 62, the senior biology major out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as we show you that score we talked about a moment ago. Carm Koza says that Jeff Rudolph is the best offensive lineman he has ever coached at Yale, and he says the kid has an outstanding opportunity to be a pro football player, but he doesn't know if he wants to. Second down, five. Zachary trying to bounce it outside. He does. He has a first down. And he took a hit well on a bounce from Resendiz. No flag thrown at the 40-yard line. An 11-yard gain. Zachary nearing the 100-yard mark for the day. And it's a big first down for Yale at the Harvard 47-45 to play. North Carolina with a lead now on Duke. And how about that NC State team? Dick Sheridan's done a nice job with the Wolfpack this year. Other scores as you see some traditional football games around the country. 98 yards rushing now for Buddy Zachary. He's nearing his fifth 100 yard game of the season. Kevin Bryce in running right and tackled by Peter Allen after a gain of three. Beginning to grow. Bit more solemn along the near sideline. The Harvard Crimson facing a nine point deficit, 26 to 17, with 7.25 to play in the fourth quarter, and the clock is running. Oh 
second down. Eight yards to go for Yale first down. Up the middle, Callahan. He's hit by Gasevitz immediately and dropped after a gain of one. Darren Keeler, the quarterback today for Yale, we mentioned briefly earlier, the start of the football season, he was not a member of the Yale football program. He played freshman football last year, was a defensive back, played very little at quarterback. As a matter of fact, he threw four passes for the freshman team last year, was 0 for 4 with one interception. He did lead the team as a defensive back in interception. But he's also a pitcher on the baseball team. He made the decision to play baseball. And after three Yale quarterbacks were hurt after the second game of the year, Carm Koza called him and asked him to come back. And he has. And he is leading the Yale offense brilliantly today. He's down to the 30, a yard short of a first down. One of the reasons why he's been able to step in and pick it up so quickly, he graduated first in his high school class at Tri-Valley High School in Pennsylvania. He's an extremely intelligent young man, was the junior class president at Tri-Valley High. Sebla Spina gonna send in the two tight ends on fourth down and say we want to get the first down here and keep it going. Keep in mind, 20 years ago today, Harvard trailed by 16 points with three and a half minutes to go and came back for that miraculous tie. They're gonna need the same kind of miracle today. Big play right here, third and short. Callahan, very close. Depends on the spot. Where they have it spotted, it'll depend on left foot or right foot of the Headlinesman, it is going to be very close. With my track record, I'm not going to guess. I can't see the ball yet from our angle to tell you whether or not he got it. Boy, it's going to be real close. Clock stopped for the measurement. 5.47 to play, fourth quarter. Yale, 26. Harvard, 17. They're short. Harvard takes over on downs. First and 10, they need points in a hurry. The Acura Legend sedan offers such amenities as leather trimmed interior, sophisticated stereo system and ergonomically designed controls. Is it any wonder people enjoy sitting in it? And with its 24-valve 2.7-liter V6, is it any wonder they enjoy standing on it? The Legend Sedan, precision-crafted performance from Acura. Announcing a dramatic breakthrough in shaving technology. The new Remington Microscreen Ultimate shaves as close as a blade and closer than any other electric shaver or your money back. The Ultimate's exclusive beard lifter gets whiskers other shavers leave behind. And like all Remington Microscreen shavers, the first screen shaves incredibly close, the second even closer. Try the new Remington Ultimate now. It will shave you as close as a blade and closer than any other electric shaver or your money back. wanted a Bud Light! Bud Light! If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Now go get pizza. Bud Light. Because oh, everything else is just a light. Here in Cambridge with 5.47 to play, Yale has a nine-point lead over Harvard. Harvard gets the ball back. And in the Ivy League title game in Ithaca, Cornell went on a 99-yard drive. Steve Lutz the touchdown on a 15-yard run. And the Big Red with the lead for the first time in that game with approximately 10 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. 9-6, they lead Penn. Tim Perry at quarterback for Harvard. Option, Perry. Out to the 36-yard line. Gain of almost seven on first down. To go back to that game 20 years ago when Harvard rallied behind Frank Champy for the 29-29 tie against Yale. Champy was a backup quarterback, just like that guy, number six, Tim Perry. Can he manufacture two scores in the final five minutes and now 15 seconds as the clock continues to tick right there? It would be a wild finish to a wild game. Hines comes around again. Perry with the fake. 
recent pursuit. He throws, and it's caught, and a flag down. Scott Simmons was on the back of the receiver. It's been ruled an incomplete pass, but I think he's going to be called for pass interference nonetheless as he was draped all over Alex Konovalchik at the 42-yard line. Pass ruled incomplete, but a penalty flag thrown where the incompletion took place. Scott Simmons, reserve linebacker, was the man on the coverage, the junior from Lima, Ohio. Defensive pass interference, first down. Perry rolling out under pressure from John Reese to his fullback running a little drag pattern and Scott Simmons was there about a half a count too soon. The option again. They have blockers out in front of it. Perry spins out to the 48-yard line. They pick up seven, but they're chewing up time. 4.50 to play. Here's Tim. Sean, after coming from 20 points down, Ohio State has surrendered a touchdown. And who else? Leroy Horde gets in. And now the Wolverines lead it 27-24 late in the fourth quarter. We'll keep you updated on that and other games. Sean? Time running out for Harvard. Perry, under pressure, throws too far ahead of Hines. He was being pressured by Brian Hennon. Hines had stopped and was standing out on the flat, and Perry led Hines. By too far a margin, Mark Bianchi will bring the play in. Strong safety blitz by Brian Hennon and the Yale defensive coaches guessed right on that call. They were trying to let Perry get all the way over to the left side and then throw back to Hines in sort of a naked screen, if you will. Had to throw it before he wanted to. Here comes Hines again. Here comes the option again. Hines takes the pitch. Hit and knocked out of bounds with a 50, a yard and a half short of a first down. Don Lund made the tackle. So a big fourth down play coming up here for Harvard. They absolutely have to pick up this yard and a half and keep the drive alive with 4.22 to play. This is the play of the afternoon. They have been running the option to their right, and now Harvard's going to take a timeout. Joe Rustig, he had the whole timeout on the huddle clock, but he wants to make sure on this play, so he's going to take the timeout. That could come back to haunt them later on. They still need two scores. Bogey. Featuring street scenes. Myth. Myth. Gabriel. Tomato. Tomato. Jed. Jed. Bugle Boy, Insane Nessie, Bogey, New Haven and Trump. starting to stare. Omni Fitness, the fitness superstore in Norwalk and Orange. Strange how many automobiles portrayed as state of the art have become mere illusions of innovation. Enter the Acura Legend Coupe, named one of the 10 best cars in the world by both car and driver and road and track magazines. It is shattering preconceived ideas of what a performance automobile should be. The Legend Group. Precision crafted performance from Acura. Back at sold out Harvard Stadium. The biggest play of the football game coming up. Yale with a nine point lead. 422 to play. And Harvard has fourth down and a yard and a half to go. Just on its side of the 50 yard line. And that timeout was called by Yale, not Harvard. You saw Joe Restick was indicating that he wanted a timeout, but the Bulldogs called timeout first, and it was charged to them. Option. Perry pitches. Hines. First down. He got to the 47. He picked up the first down by a yard and a half after a gain of three. We well, talk about going to the well and getting lucky. They again run the option to the short side and just barely got the first down.
Clock stopped. Hines got out of bounds. 4-16 to play. Yale 26, Harvard 17. Perry throwing long, and it is caught by Phillips. He's out of bounds with a first down at the Yale 33, a 15-yard game. 4.08 to play. A little vindication there for Neil Phillips, who dropped a touchdown pass earlier in the football game. Did they say he got out of bounds? Apparently he did not. Now after they have set the chains, the clock starts up again. That'll take it inside of four minutes. Is it possible to have 20-year deja vu? <laughs> Perry throws and it is intercepted Chris Brown picked it off at the 31 yard line it was intended for Mark Bianchi Brown stepped in front of him and made the interception Yale takes over with 343 to play in a nine point lead what a great athletic play by the junior from Washington DC Perry is being pressured here by Scott Simmons just trying to get rid of the football, throwing towards Mark Bianchi. And Brown with a great interception, his second of the year. We'll be back to Harvard Stadium right after this on ESPN. Casio watches that do more than keep time. They keep you ahead of your time. The Nordica N9 series. ESPN is your ticket to the NFL when the Patriots and Dolphins go head-to-head. -head. The Patriots pack the punch on their playoff drive that leaves opponents red, white, black, and blue. The Dolphins' Dan Marino connects with the Marx Brothers, Duper and Clayton, and offense is the secret word. The New England Patriots and Miami Dolphins battle head-to-head -head on NFL Sunday Night Football at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. Marcos's team has played turnover-free football this afternoon. Harvard has turned it over twice. The pivotal one moments ago, the interception thrown by Tim Perry. Yale with the ball back and a nine-point lead. 3.40 to play. Zachary got one, but right now they're just concerned about killing the clock, which winds down to three and a half minutes to play. The Yale student body that has journeyed up here to Boston is right at the edge of the field in the far corner of Harvard Stadium here. Matter of fact, they're on the field in the end zone and down near the goal line, as you can see. This would be the first win for the Yale seniors over Harvard. Harvard has won the last two. Keeler watching the play clock. Bryce to the 36. Third and five upcoming. Tom Yoey had led Harvard to two straight wins over Yale. He was trying to make it three in a row. Gutty performance playing for the most part on one leg. And Harvard's best chance for victory perhaps went by the boards when he left the game. Harvard burns the first of its three timeouts on this third and five situation with 2.53 to play in the ball game. They're trying to get the fans off the field. Several of the officials ran down to the end zone trying to get the Harvard students, and now the mounted police have come in, and that gets the attention of the students. Isn't it amazing how well the mounted police can move people back? They might confront a policeman sometimes, but they're not going to confront a horse. They don't know any better. They're going to step on your feet if you don't move back. I think I'll move back. Tony Hines. Terrific performance in this, his final game for the Harvard Crimson. Come on, D! 
but it will be a losing effort unless the defense that he is encouraging can stop Yale and get the ball back immediately. It was not a timeout. They just stopped the clock to get the fans off the field. Keeler keeps, and he is out to the 40, lost the football. And who got the ball? Rich, Rich Puccio. Puccio came up with it. The officials conferring. There's been no indication from the officials that it's Harvard football. The officials just waving his hands to stop the clock, and here it is. They do give the ball to Harvard at the 40-yard line. Rich Puccio with the fumble recovery. Aaron Keeler was trying to stretch out to get the first down, which would have been the crusher. You can see him fake the option, and the ball is stripped by Henry Olsen, and Rich Puccio just beat Kevin Bryce to the football. This was not over yet, folks. 2.20 to play. Yale 26, Harvard 17. First down, Crimson at the Yale 40. Draw play to Hines, and it didn't get anything. Two yards. Mike Berry made the tackle, as did Bruce Bodorf. Rich Puccio, junior from North Attleboro, Massachusetts, and he kept the football. I don't blame him. Two minutes to play. Perry. On the dead run, has some running room, heads for the sideline, and goes out at the 30. Depends on the spot as far as a first down is concerned. It's very close. He needed to get right to the 30-yard line, and he has a first down. And he got out of bounds to stop the clock with a minute 53 to play. In the ball game 20 years ago, Harvard's first score to bring them within eight came with only 42 seconds to go in the game. They went for two to get the two and missed it, but had pass interference called on Yale, got a second opportunity, got the two-point conversion, and then somehow the miracle continued with an onside kick recovery and a last final play of the game, touchdown. First and 10, Perry looks for the quick hitter. Everybody's covered. Now he throws, caught a ball, chick with the catch. Oh, a blocking foul against Harvard. Hines is going to be called for a blocking infraction on Brown. Konovalchik went down at the 23-yard line. It would have been a seven-yard gain, but instead that's going to come back. Hines will be called for an illegal block downfield. He hit Brown from behind. They'll get the play over, and it run out to, let's see, on the 26, take it out to the 40. First and 20, first and 21. Clipping during the run against the defense. Cornell, perhaps on its way to the Ivy League title. 16 to 6 is the lead for the Big Red. Penn looking its first loss of the season, and its only loss of the season, squarely in the eye. Well, it would be a co championship because Penn would mm -hmm. have already clinched the title tie with the win last week over Harvard. Cornell already with one loss in the league play this season. That was to Princeton in their opener. Down the field goes the pass. Brown with the interception again. His second interception, and he runs it out to the 30, and that will seal it for Yale. They get the ball back with a nine-point lead, a minute 23 to play. We'll return to Harvard Stadium after this on ESPN. You know, when it comes to my heating and air conditioning system, I'm a real handyman. <laughs> I don't even need a screwdriver. <laughs> All I need to keep this baby humming is this. I just call <laughs> Service America. I'm no dummy. These guys are expert. I tell you, they can do anything. They'll even put in one of those... Uh... We call them filters, sir. <laughs> I knew that. Why don't you finish up there, pal, while I go change that light bulb? <sighs> call now for a $49.95 Service America precision tune-up of your heating or cooling system. The Transamerica Pyramid. You'll find it wherever there's a need for financial services. Whether it's property and casualty insurance in Dallas, life insurance in New York, consumer loans in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, or commercial financing in Chicago. You see, our home may be in San Francisco, but our heart is everywhere. Transamerica, the power of the pyramid is working for you. Behind every single flight one of these makes stand the 60,000 professionals of United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. 
Come fly the friendly skies. Back at Harvard Stadium, where Yale is on the verge of winning the 105th renewal of the game. And up in Ithaca, New York, Cornell on the verge of its first Ivy League championship since 1971 when Jack Corrigan played for the Big Red. Drew Baker back in at quarterback. He handed the ball off to Kevin Bryce, who picked up four, and Harvard calls a timeout. Gain of four on the play. It will be a co-championship. Penn will win the title for the second time in three years. And Cornell and Maxie Bond, the first championship for Cornell since 1971. At 6 o'clock here on ESPN, that's Eastern Time, Syracuse at 8-1 and one against 10-0 and o West Virginia. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, it's Miami against LSU. Miami Steve Walsh continuing that great tradition of hurricane quarterbacks. This season, he's probably going to set a touchdown season record. Touchdown passes yeah, at Miami. He it last week, Bernie Kozar's record. Tommy Hudson, the quarterback for LSU, not too bad either. No, only a few passes thrown in that ball game. You saw a moment ago, the Yale students are back down on the field. This time, the officials don't make an attempt to get them off, and the horses have backed off for the time being. Drew Baker hands it off to Bryce again. He stopped two yards short of a first down. 1-11 to play, and timeout quickly called by Harvard. Immediately following the ball game, it's out to Springfield, Massachusetts, for the Hall of Fame tip-off classic. Duke against Kentucky. John Saunders and Dick Vitale standing by. And at 5.30 this afternoon, Eastern Time, college football scoreboard with Tim Brando. Leading you into the doubleheader this evening, Syracuse and West Virginia at 6, Miami and LSU at 9. The disappointment, Neil Phillips on the Harvard side. And you know there's an awful lot of elation on that side. There's Darren Keeler and some of the other Yale players. And as Sean mentioned, the first time in their varsity football career, of course, freshmen cannot play varsity football in the Ivy League. The Yale seniors have won the game something that they will carry the rest of their lives without question. They deserve it. They came into this game as a slight underdog, but they've played mistake-free football. They've capitalized on the Harvard turnovers, and they've done it with a running game when Harvard knew they were going to run, but Harvard really still couldn't stop the Yale rushing attack effectively. And their alum from the class of 48, President-elect George Bush, continues the tradition. When a Republican is elected president, Yale wins the game, or at least ties, as that happened in 68, and it holds true again today. See if Zachary gets the call here. He needs one yard for 100. Zachary is 99 yards rushing, and Bryce is up to 89 now. It is Zachary, and he trips and goes down short of a first down, and the clock stopped immediately by Harvard. The Crimson have now used all of their timeouts, but they'll get the ball back. A minute six to play, and Yale looking at fourth down and two from their own 38-yard line. I'm checking to see if our statistician, Ray Perry, who's done such a terrific job for us this season, gives Buddy Zachary the yard or not, did he? No, Ray he says no. <laughs> Those stat guys are tough, boy, I tell you. Christmas is a month away yet, and some change. You can bet... The Harvard coaches told Chris Resendiz, we know you want to try and block this punt, but don't go off sides. That happened to him earlier in the ball game, and that was a costly penalty. And One of several big plays in the game, and all of them have gone against Harvard. Ten men up, Molinari the lone man back. They came with the rush, but Cowan got it off. Molinari with the catch, and he's down at the 32-yard line. So this will take a miracle now larger than that which occurred here 20 years ago. John Yavison was the coach at Harvard then. It's Joe Restick at the helm now, and he's on the verge of going 8-10 and 10 lifetime against Yale, while Carm Kozer will go one game above the 500 mark in his battles with Harvard. He was 11-11-1 against the Crimson coming in. Perry has to throw it. Big rush, he got away from it. Now he has to run with no timeouts. And he's down, short of a first down at the 38. 
Harvard will go to the hurry up. Oh, now we got a late flag. Maurice Frelo and John Reese got tangled up. We're going to get a dead ball foul, I believe, called on John Reese. The injured player Scott Wallum for Yale getting up very slowly. Indeed, the clock stops because of the dead ball foul. They also get 15 yards on it. It'll take you out into Yale territory. Wallum was injured last year and did not play in the game against Harvard. He missed Personal much of the season. The and he goes off. You hate to see anybody get injured at any time, but particularly with just 46 seconds left in the season. Wallum helped off the field. Flanked out Tony Hines as a wide receiver to Perry's left. That's where he's looking. And he threw it. And it's incomplete. The officials hesitated, looked at each other, and then ruled that to be an incomplete pass. It was deflected. That's why it traveled backwards, not a lateral. And 36 seconds remain. The two quickest men on the Harvard offense are Neil Phillips and Tony Hines. So they flanked those two out wide, but they were trying to hit Gajewski underneath. Don't forget the basketball game. John Saunders and Dick Vitale. Dick's first game, you know he's geared up to. You see him at halftime of our game? Gonna have to have a seatbelt for Dick. Over the middle, Gajewski with the catch. He has a first down. That'll stop the clock while they reset the chains. Gajewski down in the arms of Reese at the 32 yard line. Just 28 seconds to play. Yale with a nine point lead. Have to throw it to the end zone now. Perry caught a break there. They had a little bit of trouble setting the chain, so he was able to yell out the play to both sides. There you see some of the celebrating seniors, Art Coleman. A few tears on the face for the big guy. Short drop, Hines with it. He's out of bounds, gain of seven, but that kills more time. 17 seconds left. We'd like to thank all of the people who've been associated with Ivy League football this season here on ESPN. We remind you that this has been a presentation of ESPN in association with the Council of Ivy Group Presidents and Trans World International. And I know, Jack, we're particularly grateful to the coaches and sports information directors around the league who gave us so much of their time this season. Perry for the end zone. Too far for Phillips. Rich Huff on the coverage. 12 seconds left. Well, without question, we have had just great cooperation from people like Joe Restig and Carm Coza and the staffs here at Harvard and Yale and at all the schools in the Ivy League throughout the year. We've had the opportunity in our six weeks to, to see every team in the ancient eight at least once. That was nice in this first season. We are glad that we were able to bring it to you here on ESPN. 12 seconds left. Perry for the end zone again flagged down on the play and it's nearly intercepted by Chris Rutan. Let's check out the flag five seconds left. Flag thrown back at the 20 yard line. John Bartholomew the upset offensive lineman they said he was downfield. And you see my alma mater is extending their lead. They're going to beat Penn 19 to 6. Share the Ivy League championship for the first time in 17 years. It was a sophomore on the 71 team that won the Ivy title along with Dartmouth that year. The great Ed Marinero. Had I don't know how you would feel about it Jack but I'd imagine when two teams tie like that with one loss for a league title and Cornell in this case beat Penn. I wonder if they feel a bit more like champions because they beat the team that they were tied with. I think it, maybe you think about that early on but as you get away from it. You're just happy that you've got a part of a championship. You get the chance to wear the ring. I, mean, I still probably wear mine. That's right. I can't imagine the Penn Quakers will run off the field as happily no, as the true. Cornell Big Red today even though they are co-champions. Last play. Perry to the end zone again. Too far. Through the arms of Huff, Yale has won the 105th renewal of the game. 
and the Yale students stormed the field from every direction. We hope you've enjoyed Ivy League football this season on ESPN. The final score, Yale 26 and Harvard 17. Tim, it's all yours, and thank you very much. All right, Sean, a pleasure working with you and Jack throughout this Ivy League season. All right, let's quickly update you. Notre Dame 21-3 over Penn State. Michigan and Ohio State Buckeyes lose it 34-31. Now, Barry Sanders, another outstanding day for him against Iowa State. Here's his most recent touchdown run. Over 100 yards again on this day for Barry Sanders, moving in on the single-season rushing record as Oklahoma State has moved to a 21-13 lead over Iowa State. Now, late word out of Pasadena is that Rodney Pete is dressed. There you see him as he prepares for his date against UCLA, which is coming up later. No confirmation as to whether he will start today's game, but it appears that he may. Well, we're ready now to take you to the tip-off classic. You know, it was 10 years ago when Kentucky met Duke for the national championship in the Final Four. Kentucky got the big prize then, but that was yesterday. Thanks, Tim, and things have certainly changed since that time. The Kentucky Wildcats go against number one Duke, but Dick, we have to talk about it off the top of the show. Dick Vitale, along with John Saunders. The Kentucky Wildcats, the problem for them, the allegations from the NCAA, 17 of them, and they have to answer. John, right now, I'll tell you, this is the toughest thing for me to ever do in TV. I have great respect for Eddie Sutton, what he's achieved in the past, and also for all the coaches. I love coaching, but the perception of Kentucky is at an all-time low right now, and something has to be done. They need a new fresh breath of air no doubt about it they should have made a change when mr hagan went to the sideline and resigned the president should have asked for the resignation of the coaching staff as well more on that in just a moment and we'll be back to tip off the tip off classic in just a moment the kentucky wildcats and duke blue devils oh for a warm and cozy castle insulated safely from the cold of winter cold cuts oh for insulate safe three from certainty pure white fiberglass insulation thermally efficient non-combustible oh warm for year-round comfort help protect your home or castle insulate safely with insulate safe three call your insulation contractor now Shower massage by Teledyne Water Pick. What's the secret to pop secret microwave popcorn? Perfect popcorn popped under perfect conditions. Pop secret leaves very few on pop kernels. Pop secret from Betty Crocker. It's the only way to pop. Get going. Breakfast is ready at Burger King. We cook a real good breakfast like you did it yourself. It's got a taste just as good. When you need it to somebody else. Bring breakfast to Burger King, and we'll make a fresh croissant sandwich or bagel sandwich just for you. We do it like you do it. Then we do it like we do it at Burger King. Welcome back to the Springfield Civic Center. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. Just about ready to tip it off. The Kentucky Wildcats against the number one team in the nation, the Blue Devils of Duke. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First of all, you take a look at Mr. Miller, Derek Miller of Savannah, Georgia, Jr. He'll be starting at guard for Kentucky along with Chris Mills, the freshman out of Los Angeles. He's not a point guard, but he'll be playing there today. Reggie Hansen is also playing forward. And Mike Scott, the big guy who transferred from Wake Forest, and Laron Ellis, the sophomore, tremendous player. Danny Ferry, Ala Abdul Nabi, and Robert Bricky playing up front for Duke, along with Phil Henderson and Quinn Snyder playing the point guard for Duke. The opening tip is tipped out of bounds. Here's a look at Mike Krzyzewski on the sideline. What a record he's had. We look at the numbers right there, overall record, but in the last five years, he has averaged 27 wins a year. And in the last three years, the Ferry era, they've averaged 30 wins. Unbelievable. Danny Ferry has done the job since coming over. Out on the wing, it's Henderson. Henderson will be playing the shooting guard. Bricky, who used to play a lot inside last year, will be asked to do some more shooting this year for the Blue Devils. 
That's a five-second violation. That's typical Eddie Sutton defense. Tremendous pressure on the ball, lock up. The one thing, as we look at Eddie Sutton right here, they will come after you. I want to clarify that point a little la earlier, later rather, what we made earlier about the perception of Kentucky basketball, John. We'll have time to talk about that as Miller has the ball. Miller is a good shooter. Chris Mills, we talked to him earlier, as he moves it into LeRon Ellis, who turns around, but the ball won't drop and Britton, the big rebound. Ellis has to be a little bit more aggressive. He's got great tools. Anderson loses the ball as he tries to drive, and Ellis comes up with it. Chris Mills, as we talked about, is not a true point guard, but he says he has brought it up in high school before. He's a very versatile player. He's a kid that can shoot the ball, handle it. Tremendous high school talent. Let's take a look at the all-time victory leaders, and we talked about the program, Dick, at the top. The Kentucky, the perception of them is hurt, but you see where the, most of the perception has been throughout the years. What I want to say there is, even if innocent or guilty on those allegations, I feel they need a new, fresh breath of air. And at the time of asking Cliff Hagen to step down, they should have included the coaching staff as well. Not that they're guilty. I have great respect for what Eddie Sutton has done. But the perception out there, every article you read, we saw one today in a Boston Herald by Charlie Pierce that was scathing. And I just think it's been an embarrassment to the university. And that's why I say they need to get some new life back into this once proud, great program at Kentucky. Nothing to do with Eddie Sutton, of course. It's just a perception of Kentucky basketball. Mike Scott, the big guy in the middle, 6'11", the only senior on the team. Transferred from Wake Forest, of course, a couple of years ago. Chris Mills is being hawked by Bricky. Ball is stolen double by Abdul Mabby. Ooh, I thought it was a double dribble. And Snyder comes up with it and puts it in for the first two points of the game. Underrated player had to step in last year for Tommy Amico, who's now a graduate assistant that was a tremendous defensive player, and he did a solid job for Duke at that point. Nice look pass by Scott. But Danny Ferry is there with a great defense on Miller in the rebound. Ferry brings it up just like he's a point guard. Great passer. In for Bricky, he gets fouled as he brings it up. Looks like Hanson. Bricky's got the great legs, John. He's a tremendous bouncer off the floor. We're going to watch him reverse the ball back to Snyder. There's Snyder with the drive down the lane, changes to the left hand. He's an outstanding young man, class in every way. I always tease my daughter. If you can find somebody, really, a class guy, go get me a Quinn Snyder as a son-in-law. Somebody from Duke. Why not? Well, it doesn't have to be from Duke. He's just a class guy. This kid, Ricky, they tell me, has really improved his game and has moved to the perimeter a little bit. This is the first free throw. Let's take a look at the keys to winning this game. It's going to be tough, certainly, for the Kentucky Wildcats. Well, they're, be they're asking him to handle the ball against the Duke pressure, and that's going to be tough. What a way to say, welcome to the world of college basketball, Chris Mills. Ricky missed both of them, and Chris Mills is certainly asked to do a lot. Of course, Sean Sutton likely would have been the starting point guard, the coach's son, but he suffered a fractured cheekbone when hit by Derek Miller in one of the blue-white games. Nice defense by Snyder, and a nice pass as he's falling down. Oh, what a great look. Oh, slam jam bam, my first one of the year, the Duke Blue Devils. Hey, if the wackos were here from Cameron, they would be going bananas now. Tell you what, Duke Blue Devils and Kentucky Wildcats are probably glad this one's being played at a neutral site with all the problems. But look at the pass. They Great call look. him the weatherman. Great look by Henderson. Good 45-degree angle on the cut to the goal. And there's the bounce off the floor. Ricky makes good on that one. And we have a 5 to nothing lead early. Here comes the pressure. The one thing Kentucky has to go in at halftime within five or six for confidence alone. Chris Mills takes it in against Danny Ferry, and he's charged with a blocking foul. He did try to slide across, but didn't quite get there. Keys for winning for Duke, uh, John. We talked about it earlier. They have to create the up-tempo game, the transition game, and Quinn Snyder has to push the ball up the court. We saw previously an example of the layup three-on-one, and Duke's got to utilize that up-tempo because Kentucky doesn't have the manpower to go up and down the floor. This might be the weakest Kentucky team in many, many a year. I don't think there's much question about that as Chris Mills misses, but you reminded me earlier today, they do have some talent there. Well, Chris Laron, Mills and LaRon Ellis. Well, LaRon Ellis and Chris Mills were player of the years in the state of California. And they headed out to Kentucky, but uh, really they don't have the depth back there. And they need Sean Sutton back to give him a little leadership at that point guard spot. 
Anderson bringing the ball up this time. Talked about last year, he wasn't sure what they wanted his role to be, but I think he's a little happier this year and more comfortable with the role that he'll be able to shoot the ball. Ricky rejected by LaRon Ellis. He's got talent. He can be as good as he wants. I told him yesterday in a lobby, I said, LaRon, if you just develop that hungry attitude, you can be a dominating kind of player. There he rotates over. There's Ellis. He says, no, Bricky, I don't care how high you jump. Get it out of the lane. Push it outside to Danny Ferry. Three-pointer is no good, not even close. Henderson gets the rebound and puts it home. They're looking for some big scoring out of Henderson. He reminds many people of Johnny Dawkins, though not in that class, certainly. Dawkins was a, such an explosive scorer in 1986. 7-1 to one is the early lead for Duke as they start to put a little bit of an early run on, and that's got to be trouble, Dick, for this Kentucky team. They are young. And they don't want to get behind and fold under the pressure. Well, you talk about youth. I think we were talking off the air. You look at this team. They only have four players that have played college basketball. Look at that pressure defensively. They come right up on the ball, and there's the good rotation over defensively by Ferry for the block shot. Hanson inbounds to Scott, and he hits it. I'll tell you, Dick, I saw some tape of Scott in an earlier game against Sweden, and he does have a nice touch for a big man. Yeah, he's not physical. I saw him at Wake Forest. He has touch. Adrian Abbott with the ball. On Scott, the defense brings it away. Chris Mills with the ball. Mills is going to be an outstanding college player. Pelfrey who's in the game, number 34, and he hits the bomb for three. Pelfrey shoots that jump shot, squares up. He was a red shirt last year. He was also a forward and a center in high school, but they obviously with the size asked him to play guard. Even a little bit of point subbing in for Chris Mills today. Like that. Danny Ferry turns around with a jump hook. It won't go, and a big rebound by Mills. Mills very active. He'll be an outstanding number three man when they get the legitimate point guard something at the point. The ball is saved, but right back to Dukes. And Quinn Snyder pushes it the lot for Bricky, but he can't get up in time to get the ball. You know, the one thing about both clubs, they mirror each other in terms of the way they play. Pressure defense, very aggressive basketball. This is what we're talking about, the transition game. Pushing the ball up the court. They try to throw it a little lob, Snyder. They try to get the timing to Bricky, but they don't get it to convert. The score is 7-6. to six. The Duke Blue Devils, number one in the nation, lead Kentucky. Back with more in a moment. We're not a company. But we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop, to perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career, a career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army. The Navy. The Air Force. The Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Oh, yeah. The new Chevrolet Corsica, the sports sedan that knows you have more important things to spend your money on, like your family. With the heartbeat of America. Chevrolet. Today's Chevrolet. Oh, Ma, I can just see that big old roast beef and the little potatoes with the crispy edges past the gravy. I bet Sally made the peach pie with the fancy woven crust, right? Me? Sure. I'm eating. Now, Ma, did you bake those biscuits with the butter melting in your mouth like sunshine? Mmm! What are you having, Thursday? I'll call. Sound that takes you home again. That's AT&T. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Kentucky versus Duke, is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, by Nike, who reminds you to just do it, and by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Phil Henderson hit both free throws to give Duke a 9-6 lead early on in this game. And Dick Vitale, they've been ranked number one in the nation by just about every preseason publication, including their own. 
What makes Duke so good, and how good are they? Well, the team defense, number one, and Mike Krzyzewski right now doesn't have a downside as a coach. If I had to hire one guy in America that I'd want today, it would be Mike Krzyzewski. The only thing negative about him is I can't spell his name. But you look at Duke, and they have tremendous depth. But the one thing, they are not invincible. They don't have the explosive big-time scorer, a la Johnny Dawkins in 86, when they had that great year, and they lost to Louisville, I believe, in 86, uh, uh, down in the NCAA tournament. But I, I look at this basketball team, and I see just a team that plays together. They certainly are not invincible. The ACC this year will be a step down. The Big Ten and the Big East will be 1-2, and it'll be like fighting, what do you like, Mantle or Mays? But all the other conferences will be a notch below. What about leadership on Duke? Remember that team in 86 had those seniors on it, and, and Allery and Billis and Dawkins and such? That was a great point you just brought up, John, because I think they'll really miss Billy King, not only defensively as we look at Mike on the sideline, they'll miss him as a communicator defensively and such a leader on the floor. They're going to have to make up for that. And remember, Danny Ferry is an outstanding player, but he's not a vocal guy. He's not a guy that's animated on the court in terms of spurring other people on and leading in that fashion. A couple of changes in the game. Darren Feldhaus is in the game, a guard. And Greg Kubek for Duke, number 22, a guy who likes to shoot a double dribble call. Darren Feldhaus. Feldhaus was a Mr. Basketball in Kentucky. They have another one on the sideline as we look at Eddie Sutton with his staff to the left, Wayne Casey. And to his, well, to his right was Wayne Casey, to the left, James Dickey. Kubek on the wing, he loves to shoot it to Smith. Snyder around the brick, he pushes it out to Kubek. You can look for him to shoot as he pushes it into Smith, turns around and hits the short jumper. He can yeah. score inside. Had a great second year. Then last year he dropped a little bit, lost his starting role, but he has ability to score in the lane. John Pelfrey, there you see him bringing the ball up, playing the point guard, and as we mentioned, played forward and some center in high school. Vance can't handle the pass. They do a great job at Benai, and one pass away from the ball. They overplay the passing lane. They create good help situations. They're always getting good angles defensively. Most coaches say when you play against Duke, it's like playing against controlled chaos. They cause you to go in case. And a lob again to Bricky. Goes up for the pass. Not this time. As Hanson and Scott are there to swat it back in his face. Scott with a good reject inside. I want to welcome everyone once again to the Springfield Civic Center. This is the tip-off classic, Duke against Kentucky. This is a rematch of the inaugural classic 10 years ago. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. This basketball season is underway. Quinn Snyder on the wing is wide open. Well, he's wide open because they executed an excellent back screen. They sprung him to the screen area. He popped open in the open area and drilled a J. Quinn Snyder. Here's where we're going to see the inexperience possibly. You've got a guy like Snyder who's a great ball hawk, good defensively, working against some young boys. Notice how they really pressure the ball and deny the ball one pass away. Alfrey out at the top. Quinn Snyder is all over him. They would, they would like him to even be a little bit tougher on the ball. And Ron Ellis with the short shot that will not fall. Ball is out to Kentucky. The problem with Kentucky will be they have to keep the game in the 60s. They don't have the scoring power to get into the 80s and 90s. So they're going to keep, they have to keep the game in the 60s for a chance to win. 13 to 6 is the early score with 14.09 left in the first half. Duke leads Kentucky. Duke, the number one team in the nation, working against a very young Kentucky team. Hanson, they say, may be the best athlete on the Kentucky team. He's been impressive in their workouts. They think he can be a good player. Big rebound by Kubek, who is a good rebound. He, good rebounder. He did an outstanding job for Duke. The only freshman last year to start in every game for the Blue Devils. Oh, play in every game. He didn't start, John. Pardon me. That's what I meant to say was to play in every game. Danny Ferry with a nice move. Well, you're in, you're entitled to a turnover. Those football <laughs> games blow my mind. We have to rush. We can't do our opening. They got to jam it on us. Look at the team experience right here. Unbelievable when we look at Duke versus Kentucky. I think the biggest sign as we look right here, you talk about Kentucky, they lost seven players. They lost their five seniors, plus they lost Rex Chapman, and they also lost Eric Manuel. When you lose seven like that, it's going to be very difficult for Eddie Sutton. I think if this team could reach mediocrity and be a 500 team, they would be really playing to their maximum. 
Danny Ferry hits the first free throw. You want to talk about inexperience. The 13 players on the Kentucky team, Dick, they total 895 minutes last year. That guy in the free throw line, I think he had more than that. Unbelievable, <laughs> yep. And there's a look at Eddie Sutton. It has not been an easy time for Eddie. And I really know it's been a tough, tough time. But he's had to face there with the allegations and the stigma that's been created over the perception out there. It's just been amazing. Ron Ellis is out high. Danny Ferry is on him. Hanson tries to put the ball on the floor. They lob it ahead to Danny Ferry. He's all alone and jams it. Oh, to DeManta with a monster mash. Danny Ferry, not a great jumper. Little high five. They love him down at Duke. He broke the hearts of the people in North Carolina when he said, I'm coming to Durham, North Carolina. Watch him play D. Now look at him. He's going to harass right here defensively. They've now he's got good help. He sees the ball. Now he spots the ball is loose. Look at him like a tight end. Like a tight end. He says, Bavaro, I can do everything you do because you're not doing anything this year for the Giants. Kentucky has turned the ball over six times, resulting in 13 Duke points. Stay with us. There's more to come from Springfield. We're not a company, but we recognize potential. We develop it. We use it. We'll make sure that as your responsibility grows, so will you. As your ability for leadership grows, so will you. Working with us, you'll gain self-confidence, become a person with a future. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Marines, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Crater of Fire, Chevy S10 versus Ford Ranger in a tug of war of power. And there they go, two compact pickups with biggest available engines and automatics. The Ford's trying, but look at that Chevy S10 power. Its bigger V6 is just too strong for Ford. Chevy S10, when it comes to pickups, no wonder America is having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America, that's the day Chevy truck. We wanted a Bud Light! Bud Light! If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Now go get pizza. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Welcome back to the Springfield Civic Center. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. The Blue Devils lead it 17 to 6 after that big dunk by Danny Ferry. Take a look here again at Mike Krzyzewski. You know, his first three years, life wasn't easy at Duke. He had a 17-10 season, but then they really struggled for two years. In fact, it got so bad that they were beaten by Wagner and they booed the Duke team. Wagner, where's Wagner? I know it's in Staten Island. At home. Ron Ellis is on the free throw line. Had a technical foul call? Yep. 17 to 8. Ellis pulls them to within nine. Intentional grab this shirt. Mickey Crowley gave me the information right here. Nice to be right next to the officials like that. Kentucky will also have the ball to inbound, down by nine, and a chance to cut it to seven. Intentional foul, two shots in the ball. Hanson out to Ron Ellis. They take such great pride in their defense. Dude. Look at them rapping, hustling. Oh, Aaron Feldhaus with a jumper and does hit it. He can shoot the ball. He's, oh, an excellent, he's an excellent open shooter. John Smith. The ball won't go. Bodies are falling all over the place. And of course, there'll be a travel call on that. As soon as you fall to the deck with the ball, it's an automatic, an automatic walking violation. We heard, earlier, Dick, we talked about the keys to winning. You talked about Chris Mills handling Duke's defensive pressure. Well, you look here, Duke's already got 13 points off the turnovers, putting pressure on the ball, pushing it out, and getting the easy score. Mills was asked to handle that at the point guard slot. We take a look at Chris right here. Duke turns the ball over on the walk. Reggie Hansen inbounds to Darren Feldhaus. Eddie Sutton is one outstanding teacher defensively. If he has equal talent and they go head to head, these two teams mirror each other. If you would see the statistics from last year, they're basically equal in almost every area. Feldhaus was open for a little while, puts it on the floor, puts up the shot, and won't go in again. Kubek 
gets up for another big rebound. They have to get Kubik free for the three-point shot. He can really drill the long-range bomber. Speaking of threes, there's Danny Ferry that won, won not fall. And Pelton gets the rebound. Bill Henderson all over Pelfrey. Nice, nice back four. And a blocking foul call. Excellent backdoor cut. Duke a little bit slow, rotating over to give help. They cut great backdoor play. Watch this right here. They run backdoor, cuts behind the defender right now, catches him staring at the ball, and there's the rotation over, and it's a little slow. Kubik got caught staring at the ball. Hansen on the line. came over to help, but he was late, as you say, and that's where the foul was called. Hansen was already in there with the two. Well, the chance to cut the lead down to 17-13 as Kentucky hangs in here early with 12 minutes left. Already last night you had a big surprise with Xavier beating Louisville. Everybody's been touting Louisville, and the Kentucky fans were jubilant in the hotel lobby, those that were around when they received this score. I don't think they like do they like Louisville. I thought they loved them. I thought they loved those rivers. <laughs> you were surprised the way they acted, huh? They may not get everything they want down here this weekend, but they certainly got a loss for Louisville. What a great performance by Stan Kimbrough, Peter Gillen, one of the real rising stars, along with Eddie Fogler in the coaching business. Hanson tried to lob it inside to Laurent Ellis. But the pass goes out of bounds, and Duke will inbounds the ball. They make it so tough for you to get a rhythm to your offense, especially when you're playing with inexperienced people like Kentucky. We documented it earlier. Four players have only wore or played a college game on the Kentucky squad. Bill Henderson will be asked, of course, to sub in for the ball is tipped away by Hanson, away from Danny Ferry. We'll be asked to sub at the point guard some. He's playing there right now as they give Quinn Snyder a break. Christian, back on the wing. Christian Leitner on the floor, a big 6'10 player, a finesse player. Outstanding high school prospect last year from out of Buffalo. Ooh, look at some of these scores. Stanford, expectations like Connecticut, but they meet them and they win. Indiana, Jay Edwards playing for the general blowout. Illinois State and Georgia. Watch Georgia. They're my favorite to win the SEC. I think Florida just has a little too much to for Remind people, of course, that we will have the semifinals and finals of the Big Apple NIT. And Good Vitale, you'll be there as we look at some more of the scores from last night. Well, we talked about the Xavier game with Louisville and Missouri. Maybe this year they'll put that chemistry together. Chivas is starring. Wyoming beats John Schumann in his debut with SMU and Syracuse. Billy Owens and company. But it was the Sherman Douglas show last night for Jimmy Behan. Syracuse looked very strong last night. Leitner puts up the points. Welcome to the college game for the freshman. He's going to give them a player that's going to play inside and outside. He can play the high, high post as well. And they have another freshman by the name of Crawford Palmer, who's a very physical player, about 6'9 and a half, 6'10. Christian Leitner, they say, is a lot like Danny Ferry. They're not saying necessarily that he has that type of talent, but he's that type of player, a big guy who can shoot, and has the nice soft touch, and can play inside as well. A bomb from the outside for Chris Mills. Chris Mills. With that man, he's going to have many more of those in his career. Chris Mills, you don't score 33 a game and get 13 rebounds a game at Fairfax in L.A. if you can't play. Reggie Hansen with a big block on Danny Ferry, but as they struggle for the ball, Hansen is called for another foul. This is what I, we talked about, what a great athlete he is, Dick. I think Hansen could be a solid player. There he is defensively. He says, Danny Ferry, I don't care you're All-American. I don't care. I'm Reggie Hansen. I'm going to earn my due. Ferry says, get out of my way, Hansen. Hansen says, no, Big Ferry. Not this time. That shows, as we said, what a great athlete he is. That was the sixth team foul for Kentucky. So they'll be up in the bonus next. Wide open is Henderson and hits it. Henderson gives him that perimeter shot, and that score, he'll make up for the loss of Kevin Strickland, who averaged about 16 points a game and graduated. Just when the young guys from Kentucky seem to get it down to four or five points, back comes Duke to pump in a couple. Feldhouse is long with the first, but what a nice tip in there by Palfrey. They're getting contributions out of Fellhouse and Pelfrey off that bench. Well, that's got to be key for them, obviously, to win this. And Snyder, Ferry, over to Henderson, who's wide open, sends it up and knocks it down just like that. Excellent pass by Ferry, though, the zigzag pass. He flashes to the post, looks to the opposite side, and Henderson drives the J home. Quinn Snyder back on the floor. Great defensive player. 
Both the team assists last year as well. Feldhaus, Palfrey. Trying to get some movement out of the offensive half court game. Hanson again looked for Ron Ellis. It goes flying about three rows in past the press desk. He tries to save it. Nice block there by Chris Mills. And again, Ellis is wide open. Nice move and banks it home as he goes around Snyder. Good agility by Leron Ellis. I really liked his talent. His dad was Leroy Ellis, an All-American who played at St. John's and was on a coaching staff at George Rambling at the University of Southern Cal. The bomb is up. It is no good. Gets his own rebound. That's Quinn Snyder and throws it up with one hand and it drops. Quinn Snyder with the good offensive little jump hook in the lane. You talk about Ellison Mills coming out of California. So many kids were leaving. The Scott Williams left. Stephen Thompson left. Playing at Syracuse. Oh, look at these scores right here. Notre Dame 21-3. The Fighting Irish. Who knows number one? Andrew Hansen. UCLA with a three-point lead over USC and Michigan beats Ohio State but the Buckeyes with a big big close game in this one Clemson 29 to 10 over South Carolina you look at some of the top ranked teams in the nation oh, Abdul great with the move. took a little step yes, yes sir good the ball hop with the ball definitely lifted the pivot but, hey you said big score with Ohio State with Michigan there's no big score <laughs> when you don't win and you're from Ohio State especially playing at home it's been a tough time for John Cooper but Gary Williams I saw him the other day he's got a team that could really surprise along with Connecticut Wichita State and you watch Murray State not the dance studio Arthur Murray to beat Valvano Murray State you telling me that Ohio State's a basketball school now they're not a football school they're selling out all their games there's so much excitement down there <laughs> Woody Hayes would never believe it. Ron Ellis out to Hanson. See, they're playing a high offense to try and create some backdoor cuts. Using Ellis up at the top. Foul line extended, trying to take time off the clock. They're so well drilled. Eddie Sutton's a real giant in coaching. I've rated him as a Rose Royce coach over the years. Clay Buckley is in the game for Duke. He's one of those guys, they have six of them that are 6'10 or taller on this team. Tallest team ever in the history of the ACC. Shot clock, John. I don't know if he's aware of the shot clock. Four seconds. Foulhouse with two seconds left, puts it up and does hit it. Couldn't decide it any better. Give the ball to the hot shooter, Foulhouse. Get some emotion out of the team. Get them to believe they can win. It's a one-point game as well. 25-24, Duke leads as Quinn Snyder puts up the three-pointer, but it's short and will not fall. The ball comes out to Chris Mills, and he is fouled by Greg Kubek. Tripped up. Give some credit to this young Kentucky team. They are down by just one with seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half. Stay with us. The score is 25 to 24. The Blue Devils lead the Wildcats. Back with more in a moment. Climbing shoes, huh? Mm-hmm. Let's see. I figure a young VP going for senior VP in two years. Hmm. Or you move on. All that from my shoes? And the fact that they're Alan Edmonds says you're making it. Or you're faking it. What's your guess? I'll wait to see the tip. Shoemart, Connecticut's largest Alan Edmonds dealer. Shoemart, try on a store, not just a shoe. The American dream. A home. It's a major investment a tax shelter, and a hedge against inflation. With a smart mortgage from Mechanics and Farmers Savings Bank, you can build savings into your home, too. You can save thousands of dollars by paying half your monthly mortgage every two weeks, making 26 payments a year instead of 12. To find out how much you can save with a smart mortgage, call us, and we'll be right over. You've seen Ford do this for years. But now there's a big new Chevy with enough power to not only haul tons of trucks up this mountain, but also tow away the entire mountain. The advanced full-size Chevy. No wonder when it comes to pickups, America's having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America. That's the day Chevy truck. 
back in our college football studios. Tim Brando with you, and here goes Barry Sanders as our Heisman Trophy update continues. 80 yards on the day, 20 carries, 205 yards. USC just scored a touchdown against the Bruins of UCLA. A 6-3 lead for them with a point after to come. Let's get back to John Saunders and Dick Vitale. Well, I'll tell you right now, we're taking a look right here out of the half-court offense of Kentucky, trying to use the shot clock, and they do it to perfection. They play like a high-post offense. There's the ball of Ellis. There's Mr. Fellhouse, squares up, and he drives home. NBN, nothing but nylon out of the half-court game designed by Eddie Sutton. Kentucky Wildcats, the young team, is shooting over 56% at this point in the game. Duke, they're the experienced team, tried 38%. And that's why Tucker's been able to stay so close. See, they're playing like a 2 3 offense. They run three guys across the foul line extended and get some good backdoor cuts. Should have given it off. Should have given it off for the easy layup to his teammate. Did you see his open teammate? A reminder, we have two great games of college football coming your way tonight here on ESPN. At 6 Eastern time, Syracuse, the number 14 in the nation, against West Virginia, trying to set up a matchup undefeated against Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. And then it will be Miami against LSU. The Miami Hurricanes still have dreams of winning the national championship. See tonight on ESPN, Danny Ferry hits the shot. Great execution. Ferry along the baseline, catches the ball, good hands. A hey, Beano Cook told everybody early in America, he said, West West Virginia undefeated, number one. Beano smiled, great call, big fella. They still got to win a couple more games to win it all, but Beano was right on the money with this. John Pelfrey with the ball for Kentucky, being watched by Quinn Snyder, dishes it off to Feldhaus. Very reached in, but no foul call. Feldhaus along the baseline, dishes it out to the big guy, Scott. The short jumper is short. See what Kentucky is doing. They're trying to make it difficult for Duke to really overplay and extend because they're setting him up for some backdoor cuts. He can shoot the ball, Kubek, in and out. Kubek attempting the three-pointer. Will not fall. Nice defensive play. As Kubek got in to get in the face of Mills and he could not take the pass and it goes out of bounds and Duke will get the ball. You know, we mentioned as Ellis comes back on the floor from out of California, played a modern day high school player of the year in California, turnovers 11 for Duke, La Kentucky 4 for Duke. Sean Higgins was a teammate of Chris Mills, and they tell me he's really shooting the ball well for Michigan. Michigan, by the way, is loaded personnel. Bill Frieder's got a great team down there in the Big Ten, but he's got a lot of competition by, by the likes of Iowa and Illinois, and you know Bobby Knight's always going to be in there fighting. You better lace him up to play the general, especially in Bloomington. Danny Ferry gets called for the charge as he tried to push along the baseline, kind of pushed his body into the defender. Well, he leaned in, principal of verticality, he stepped in, the defensive player. This is point of emphasis. There he is in post position. The defensive player is entitled to that position. He definitely steps in, and there's Jerry Donahue with the call. Good call, Jerry. Good position by Reggie Hansen. 27 to 24, five minutes and 38 seconds left. We have a close one, folks, and many people might not have expected this. This is a bit of a surprise, a very young Kentucky team. Well, although maybe Dick Vitale wasn't surprised. Did I tell you today in the hotel, I jumped all over you. I told you it's going to be a lot tougher early, especially than people think. Ricky to Snyder, and Laron Ellis was shifting over on the defense, but he's called for the foul. Deron Ellis, a very active player. He's more or less like a forward than a center, but he's going to really have to play in the lane for this club and post up and get some good scores inside when he's back to the basket. See, look at Duke right here, pressuring. There they are, rotating over. Good help, good anticipation. See, ball you man to push the ball up the court. Snyder now shooting the one and one as Duke is into the bonus. <laughs> And this is the front end, and Ron Ellis hauls down the rebound. As Pelfrey had a little ball. Schneider can put even more pressure when he's dribbling the ball. So Ron's got three fouls already, doesn't he, John? That's very early in the game for him to be in a foul trouble. Eddie Sutton, though, leaves him on the floor. Try to pass it in to Ron Ellis. Snyder. Lays it out to Bricky, to Ferry. He pushes it inside to Bricky again. A nice pass by Danny Ferry. I'd get a timeout right now. I think Eddie's going to get one. Good backdoor cut. Good cut by Mr. Bricky. Actually, it's like a give and go. You call that a middle cut, not a backdoor cut. 
Danny Ferry, they call him one of the best passers in the game, best to come along since Larry Bird, perhaps. Watch this pass. There's more to come here from Springfield. 29 to 24 is the score. Duke leads Kentucky. We're not a company, but no company has more pride in what they do or more pride in how well they do it. We offer you a meaningful and fulfilling future, one that goes far beyond the ordinary, one that brings with it the respect and admiration of Americans everywhere. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Air Force, the Marines, the Army, the Navy. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Chevy S10 Blazer, the most powerful V6 engine available in its class, and the most fun available in any class. Ooh, 